Thank you very much. The Department of Music of Obafemi Awolo University, Leife. In the name of the Vice Chancellor of our University, Professor Itokwe Okumbodedi, we're using this occasion a medium to congratulate our graduates today, those who have been found worthy in learning and character, to obtain a Doctor of Philosophy across departments and faculties in our university. We congratulate you all. We congratulate your parents. We congratulate your wives and husbands. We congratulate your children. We congratulate the friends and well wishers, all the stakeholders of our university, stakeholders in the educational advancement of this great nation of ours. Today, the third day of the 45th convocation of our university, which is the grand finale, we have over 100 graduates that be conferred with the Doctor of Philosophy of this great university. We thank God for sparing your lives and the lives of your loved ones to witness today's occasion. May I say to the parents, wives, and husbands that you gave your husband, wife, and children to us alive and we are giving them back to you alive. All the travels, every other thing, vicissitudes of life, have not taken them away from us, neither has it taken them away from you. May I ask all of us here to put hands together for God Almighty for making us to be witnesses to this grand occasion today. You can do much better for God. I want you to look to your right. I want you to look to your left and say to the person on either side, congratulations. To underscore the importance of today's occasion, we're honoring two distinguished Nigerians of international standing. His Imperial Majesty or Neofife, Oba Adeyeye Ogoose, or Jaja II, and of course, the Group Managing Director of Elisa Day Conglomerate, Chief Michael Adeojo. It is worthy of celebration that the day you've been conferred with Doctor of Philosophy is the day that His Imperial Majesty and a business mugu are being conferred with the honorary degree, doctorate degree of our university. For those who are visiting this university for the very first time, in the name of the Vice Chancellor, we welcome you to OAU, Obafemi Awolowo University. We welcome you to OAU, only African university. We welcome you to OAU, Oba Awo University. Great Ife, the only university I judged as Africa's most beautiful campus, west of Sahara, north of Limpopo. We appreciate you for coming, and as you are here alive, may the Lord in his infinite mercy grant you journey masses back to your different destinations. I appreciate my brother, my colleague, my mentor, the registrar of Eliza Day University. We appreciate the visiting vice chancellors, the pro chancellors of other universities, and the vice chancellors of other universities here. Any moment from now, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshiba Jusien, will be with us here. And we start this program in earnest. I congratulate you once again, and I say good morning to you all. Then again today, we'll be having in attendance here two governors of our states and this country. We have the governor of Oshun State who will be physically present. And of course, Ogbeni Rutimi Akiridolu, the governor of Ondo State, 
SCN, a proud alumnus of this university, will also be here. In actual fact, Arakon Rehruti Miyakiri will be giving the convocation lecture. We recognize our royal fathers who are here. We appreciate your presence for gracing this occasion in your majesty. My name is Abiodun Olarewaju. I'm the public relations officer of this university. And I welcome you all in the name of the vice chancellor, Professor Itokwe Bode. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Can I have the music department, please? I can see that the graduates are already dancing. Oh, ni lo jo a yo yin. Lo jo a yo yin. Lo jo a yo yin. Oh, ni lo jo a yo yin. Lo jo a yo yin. Lo jo a yo yin. Chancellor of our university, Professor Shutu.
can sit down, please, for now. The presence of His Majesty Malam Akbar Garba Kuna, a title of the second DM of Kagara in Niger State. In Yoruba land, we say Kabiesi, or Kabiesi, sir. Alaji Dahatu Aliyu Makama, Makama Nupi. Alaji Danjuma Aliyu Galadima, Galadima Nupi. Alaji Kudu Eba, Eba Mina. Please just permit me, and I take full responsibility for any mispronunciation. 
And let me also hide under the handwriting of this distinguished person that gave me this. Swan Kuku Nupe, Alaji Kazim Yawa, Baradan Yaki Nupe, Director, National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, Honorable Dr. Suleiman Cheshi, Chairman, B. The Local Government Council, Alaji Shati Usman, Jataraban Nupe, Alaji Abdullahi, watching to watching to Shatia Ravi Nupe, Alaji Abdulmajid Kafa, Dambura Nupe, Alaji Uma Ibrahim Edota, Danganiu Nupe. His Majesty Alara of Ilara Equa Division, Oba Doctor Olufola Olufola Ni Olu Shayo Olu Kayo De Oku Sawo. Thank you very much. Thank you. of a great alumnus of this university. A media guru. Dele Mamadou is here in the house. The one and only Ovation magazine worldwide. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. I recognize the princes of Asia City of Ilefe here. Daddy, I appreciate you. Here, the gentlemen of the press, photojournalists from Vanguard and Tribune newspapers. You're welcome, sir. Permit me to recognize one of our distinguished royal fathers in Yoruba land, Kabiesi, as I find a thousand times inspiring, is Owa Ajero of the Ijero Kingdom in Ekiti State. Majesty of a Joseph and the Bayo and the Wale JPOFR, KBSU. I appreciate the presence of one of 
of our retirees here and Professor one of our retirees, Professor Joseph Fabayo, Fabro. I also like to appreciate the presence of the former provost of the Postgraduate College and former Vice Chancellor of the University of Sao Paulo recipe, Professor T.R. Ajayi, Taiwo Rufos Ajayi. Thank you very much for being here. I have a former Vice Chancellor at Dekule Ajasi University at Kumbaya Koko and a Professor of Political Science of Mba Femi Aolo University in Lefe. Professor Femi Mimiko is here with his wife. Thank you, sir. I have their Majesties here, Oba Adewumi, Sakari Yao, Ola Ibadi, Oba of Timidune Ife, Oba Ola Depo, so Ola, Ola Ere Wan, Lerin Yo of Alutieri, His Majesty Oba Professor Joseph, Adebenga Oloyede, Kabi Esia Kwetumodu of Ikwetumodu, Majesty of the Sojika Ndi, Onladebo JP, Salu of Edwabo. His Majesty of Meshak, Oyewole, Oyedira, Olula Moko of Yakoyo, Kabye Sio, Kabye Si, Yakoyo Awa Onero. And it's your Yakoa Yo Ibini Oluna Yopa. Kabye Si, this is your son speaking. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm even happier that Oribo is adequately represented here today. Akwetumodu is here. Salu of Edwaba is here. Olulamoko is here. Thank you very much. Even though you are seven, but Arometa Kodobeno. Okay, thank you very much. We also have here KBC, a lady fair of a faith fair. His Majesty Oba Fayemi Olumayawa. His Royal Majesty Oba Michael Adebayo Babatunde. Awo Yefa. Oba Lufan Ogobo Dene of Olomududu Ilay Fair. Seriously, you are not serious. Professor Yahyakuta Magatakada Nupe. Professor Yahyakuta, University of Nevada. Thank you very much, sir. I also recognize the presence of the Registrar of Elisa Day University, Mr. Amolulu Adegbeiro, JP. Of course, I have His Majesty here, KBAC, Oba Abiodun Adiremi Adefeinti, Alara of Ilara Moki, the Asian, yes, that is the KBAC of the ancient city of Ilara, where Baba Chief Michael Adeojo, the group managing director of Elisa Day Conglomerate, and also the founder of Elisa Day University, Ilara Moki. KBSCO. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I also recognize Mrs. Taiwo Adeojo, the wife of 
Baba Chief Michael Adeojo, Mrs. Ademola Adeojo, sorry, Mr. Ademola Adeojo, the Managing Director Jack Mutos, Mr. Kule Adeojo, MD Toyota, Nigeria. I'm so sorry. I'm having different medical handwritings here, and I may not be able to read them correctly. Permit me to do this very special recognition of the wife to our Chancellor and His Royal Majesty, Esu Nope, Ajia Hazana Yahaya Abubaka. Mommy, welcome. Thank you very much. And of course, our sister is here, Malama Abiba, Abiba Bagudu. Thank you very much, ma'am. The wife of the vice chancellor, Mrs. Ogumbode, is here. Let's, let's put our hands together for the wife of the vice chancellor. We have the wife of the deputy vice chancellor administration, Mrs. Darabola. And of course, Dr. Monone Omosulezia, that is the husband to the registrar. And of course, we have the wife of our university librarian, Mrs. Ogutuashi, in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to also recognize Mrs. Ayoshino, the wife of the university bossa. the presence of His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Osho State, Benedict Talabi, 
the Secretary to the State Government of Osho is here, Prince Wale Oyebamiji. And of course, the Chief of Staff to His Excellency the Governor of Osho State, Dr. Charles Akeola. I have here Dr. Felix Festos Oyebadi, the Head of Service. Mrs. Abiodu is also here, SC Security to His Excellency. A former Commissioner of Police in Osho State. The Honorable Commissioner for Education is here, Honorable Follow Shaw Oladoi. Mr. Jami Olawumi is here, my brother, my friend, Special Advisor to His Excellency on Education. Dr. Bode Ola Onipeko, Honorable Commissioner for Commerce, Industry, Cooperatives and Empowerment. Elijah Latifat Gewa, Honorable Commissioner for Human Resources and Capital, Capacity Building. Dr. Olashiji Olamiju, Special Advisor to His Excellency on Public Health. Mr. Nii Dohu, Special Advisor to the Governor on General Administration.
have on the entourage of Arakore Oluaru Timi Akari de Luesien, the Attorney General and Honorable Commissioner for Justice, Sir Charles Titi Lawyer Esquire, Honorable Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Mr. Donald Ojogo, Special Advisor on Public and Intergovernmental Relations, Mr. Bomi Ademosu. And of course, I also have these distinguished Nigerians, Mr. Femi Agagu, Dickiness Lola Fakbimi, Mrs. Bamidele Ademola Olateju, Honorable Fatai Olotu, Dr. Juliana Osadown, Otoba Dele Ologun, Mr. Sunday Adekole, Engineer Razak Ube, Dr. Banji Awolowo, Honorable Wale Akelo Sutu, and Honorable Olayato Aribo. And of course, I also have Otumba Razak Ishijola. We we'll welcome you all to the alma mater of your governor. Thank you very much for being part of today's celebration and history. Joker Babalola. Two. Check one, two. And thanks for hesitating the financial sagacity of my brother, check, my friend. Check, check one, two. 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 Check. Check
And finally, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce to this congregation that His Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Yemi Osibaju, Professor Yemi Osibaju, is here. Don't worry, you will soon see him. No, he's standing up. We wanted to see if he's here. He's in this university. He's in Odudua Hall now. So I congratulate you for having this type of personality to grace your graduation ceremony today. Put your hands together for yourselves. Governor Utola is also here, and Governor Rotimi Akiridulu is also here. I recognize the presence of the Honorable Commissioner of Police, Alawali Olokode. He's been moving up around to ensure that everything here is each free. The CP is thank you very much. We appreciate your agility and your tenacity of purpose. Thank you very much.
chairman of We have Honorable Yera Elubaju, the Chairman of the Central Local Government. Honorable Paris Aulubisi Oladusi, Chairman of the Central West LCDA. Honorable Kainde Oyenini, Chairman of the Northwest LCDA Drabo. And of course, Honorable Akinwale Akinwale, Chairman of the East Okiobo Air. Now, please, may I ask? that all of us should please sit down. Exception of the photographers and cameramen, video operators, also the security operatives who will be moving up and down to ensure smoothness of this program. Please, I want all the others to please find somewhere to sit, please.
The procession has started and we are starting straight away with the alumni procession. Alumni relations, the alumni procession will be followed by the academic procession. We have the assistant lecturers, assistant registrars, senior assistants registrars. procession Professor Afolabi, the Dean Faculty of Science, Professor Adewale, the Dean Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor Lomola, the Dean Faculty of Technology, Professor Adekalu, the Dean Faculty of Education, Professor Monteshaw, the Dean Faculty of Administration, Professor Adreshola. The council procession, led by the director of council, Mrs. Roke Ajibola. Followed by University Librarian, Mrs. Hansi Nayashino. Sorry, University Bossa, Mr. Hansi Nayashino. University Librarian, Dr. Zaki Ozukotu Ashe. The Vice Chancellor, Medical University of Science and Technology. The Vice Chancellor, Elizabeth University. The Visiting Vice Chancellor, University of Nevada. The University Registrar, Mrs. Margaret Omoshile. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Administration, Professor Yomida Ramona. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic, Professor Bola Babalola. We have the distinguished members of council here. Captain Balaji Breen, retired. Alaji Saidu Gume Babu. Honorable Ujin Udu. Mr. Kofi Akban. Dr. Abdulatif Babata. Engineer Wale Olayan Leye. President, Creative Alumni Association Worldwide. Professor A.A. A. Adebayo. Professor T.A. Esson. Professor Oyedele, Professor Benga and Dr. Oye Papati Mayi, 
Dr. Julius Ayede. Chancellor's procession, shall we please stand? Everybody, every living soul. Chairman of Council, Owe the Oscar Ogoji, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ejitape Ogubonede, the Honorary Awardees is the Prayer Majesty of the Adria Yogosi, and of course, the Governor of the State of Osho, His Excellency, the Vice President, Yoni Oshibaki. We give honor to our country, Nigeria, as we all stand for the national anthem. The national anthem, please. Excellency, with your respect, will you mean standing for the university anthem and after that the great affair anthem says. Thank you very much.
Statute 17 of the second schedule of Obafemi Awolowo University Transitional Provisions Act Cap 02, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Other academic titles and distinctions of the university shall be held normally once every year at such a time, and distinctions shall be conferred by the person presiding. Statute 72 also stipulates that a convocation shall be presided over by the chancellor or in his absence by the vice chancellor or in the absence of both the chancellor and the vice chancellor by the deputy. With the kind permission of His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshiba Joesien, we claim full responsibility for the innocent error of omission on our part here. May I ask, with high degree of humility, that we all stand again to sing anthem of the city of Osho. Thank you very much. Then we'll take it. La 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 la. Two one bear. Oh yeah.
Thank you very much. Section 42-2, Statute 17 one of the Second Schedule of Obafemi Awolowo University Transitional Provisions Act, TAP 02, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, stipulates that a convocation, of, a convocation for the confirmation of degrees and other academic titles and distinctions of the university can be held normally once every year. As such a, a time and place, as shall be determined by the Senate. The degrees, academic titles, and distinctions shall be conferred by the person presiding. Title 72 also stipulates that a convocation shall be presided over by the chancellor, or in his absence by the vice chancellor, or in the absence of both the chancellor and vice chancellor by the deputy vice chancellor. Therefore, in conformity with the laws as Stated, cited above, I respectfully call on the Chancellor, His Royal Highness, Alaji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR, the SNUPE, to preside over the convocation. Constitution of the Convocation by the Authority Section 2, Statute 17, Subsection 1 of the Second Schedule of Obafemi Aolo University, Constitutional Provisions Act, Chapter 02, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, I declare this convocation open for the confirmation of Doctor of Philosophy and Honorary Degrees of Obafemi Aolo University. of the visitor. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Royal Ma Imperial Majesty, my lords, spiritual and temporal, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby present to you the visitor of the visitor to Obafemi Aolo University Ileife. His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, the President and Commander in Chief of the Republic of Nigeria, who is ably and ably and most ably represented by His Excellency the Vice President Professor Yemi Osibanjo. GCOL and also Garquan Yamanipi. Your Excellency, you are most welcome. Thank you. God bless. Chancellor, I will call on the uh, visiting vice chancellors from uh, sister universities to present their good way messages. 
I would like to start with the Vice Chancellor. Vice Chancellor of uh, Eliza Dade University, Professor Olukayode Almond, to please present his goodwill message to the Vice Chancellor. I'm here on behalf of the founder, the chancellor, co-chancellor, principal officers of Elizabeth University to congratulate the vice chancellor and other principal officers of IFE. IFE is great, and it's my prayer that you become greater. Amen. Congratulations. I call on Professor Ahmed Yerima, vice chancellor, representing the vice chancellor, Regimas University. On behalf of um, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Anthony Enisa. I call on Professor F. O. Ogudare from the University of Ibadan. On behalf of the Governing Council and the entire management of the University of Ibadan, we congratulate Obafemi Awolowa University on this convocation. Great Ipe. I invite Professor Shagu Fatusi of Medical University Ondo, the Vice Chancellor of Medical University Ondo, Ondo State, to please present the On behalf of the Governor Council, the University Senate, the management, staff, and students of our university, I congratulate my great alma mater, Obafemi University, on this occasion. Congratulations to the management. Thanks a lot. I respectfully invite the Chancellor, His Royal Highness Salaji, Dr. Yahaya Abubakar, CFR, the SUNUPE, to address the convocation. Your Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Minister to this university, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, who is most ably represented by the Vice President, His Excellency Professor Yemi Osibanjo, son, GCON, and also Garkwan Yamanupe Daudu. Yeah, I just recently be there, witnessed the coronation of one of our subjects, and uh, I felt very jealous 
when uh, chieftaincy statues of various tribes have been mentioned on him, I said, no, he cannot leave Bida until I give him that title. So I gave him the title of the defender of Lupe people from the West. Your Excellency, the Exotic Governor of uh, Osu State, Al Haji Isiaka Boiga Peotola, Your Excellency, you are most welcome. Your Excellency, the Governor of uh, Ondo State, you are most welcome. All Your Excellencies, other visiting executive governors, Honorable Ministers of Education and our representatives, Your Excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, Your Imperial Majesty, Abiyasi, Oba Adi Enito, Baba Tunde, Ogunwisi, Ojaja Adi Saka. Oh, no, I thank you. Oh, no, I thank you. Other Royal Highnesses here present, your Royal Majesties, the most welcome. My Lords, special and temporal, the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, also Abu Rashid, every represented here, the Pro Chancellor and the Chairman of the Governing Council, Obafemi Aulu University, Lefi and other members of the Governing Council, the Vice-Chancellor of the University, visiting Vice-Chancellors, and heads of tertiary institutions here present, members of the Senate of the University, other principal officers of the University, members of the academic and non-academic staff of the University, distinguished alumni of the University, Parents, guardians, and guests, guardians and students of this great university, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. May the blessing of Almighty God be upon us all. All praises, glory, and honor is due to Almighty God who in infinite mercies and benevolence made it possible for all of us, particularly our very important and distinguished guest, to be present here today to witness and rejoice with us at the 45th Convocation Ceremony of this prestigious university. The Convocation Ceremony coincides with when the university is marking her 60 years anniversary celebrations of its coming into existence and located in this ancient and historic city of uh, Ileife. It is my privilege and pleasure to have the honor of welcoming all of you here present to this historic uh, ceremony. This is a special occasion and a convocation ceremony with a difference, not only because of the wondrous place that the university had occupied in history, but also because of the brand of excellence and distinction which the university has achieved six decades in the process of advancing the frontiers of knowledge. I wish to congratulate our new graduates who happen to be the reason why we are all gathered here today. You will agree with me that to be eligible for an award of a degree, diploma, or certificate of OAU is no mean fit. On behalf of the entire university community, I most heartily welcome the visitor to the university who is heavily represented here by the Vice President and all those in his entourage. I also extend a warm welcome to the executive governor of our whole state and all the executive governors here present. May I take this opportunity 
welcomed the Honorable Minister of Education, who is also heavily represented, a renowned accountant, a journalist, and a foremost educationist to this, uh, to the, this unique ceremony. I commend you for your passion and commitment in ensuring that knowledge industries are the position for global competitiveness. With utmost regard and humility, permit me to express our gratitude to our royal host, His Imperial Majesty, Kabiesi, Kabiesi, Oni of Ife, for his patronage, support, interest, and prayers. May peace continue to prevail in the land during your reign, Kabiesi, and beyond. May your reign continue to bring about the desired peace and social economic buoyancy and industrial development to the entire Ife land. Amen. I wish to know the presence of some royal fathers and traditional title holders, especially the Emir of Kagara, all the way from Niger State, and all the Kabiensis. I can see the regional of uh, uh, imperialism. You are most welcome, your imperial ma ma majesties. I most welcome you. I want to appreciate the presence of the Executive Secretary of the National University Commission, Professor Abakar Rashid, who is also represented. We salute you and the Commission for the able and result-oriented administration of the university system in the country. Let me congratulate the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, Owele Oscar Odoji, and members of the Council for their well-deserved appointments. I urge the Pro-Chancellor and the Chairman of the Governing Council and members of the Council to focus in taking the university from greatness to greater greatness in an atmosphere of peace and harmony. Endeavor to, endeavor to show commitment in pursuing laudable goals, objectives, and ideas for which Obafemi Aulo University was established and providing an invaluable guidance and support to the university management. Pursue excellence in all endeavors and transparency in every transaction. Allow me at this junction, juncture to appreciate our immediate past pro-chancellor and chairman of the governing council and members of the council, Dr. Yemi Ogumbi and other members of the council for their selfless service to the growth and development of the university. I say thank you for your contribution. To all our visiting dignitaries, chancellors, pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors of sister universities, as well as heads of other tertiary institutions, members of the Senate, former principal officers of the university, members of the university community, friends of the university, parents and guardians of the graduating students here present, I welcome you all for, the coming, uh, for coming to share the joy of this momentous occasion with us. But special thanks to the Vice President, Vice Chancellor, Professor Eutokwe Ogum Bodede, for his forthrightness, diligence, and good leadership qualities. I pray that the rest of your tenure continues to witness tremendous accomplishments and remarkable feats, peace, and progress. Let me register my appreciation to the entire members of staff of Obafemi, our law university, who have contributed in diverse ways was making this occasion a success and for your concerted efforts to the positioning the fortunes of this uh, university. In the historic perspective of this ancient university, the Ashby Commission was set up in April 1959 with the mandate to conduct an investigation into Nigeria's need in the field of higher education. This was largely informed by the manpower needed at independence to replace expatriated officials. The commission submitted its report to the Nigerian government in September 1960. The findings and the recommendation of the commission assisted to a great extent because it led to establishment of, our, of four more universities. The number of universities in Nigeria rose from one in 1948 to five in 1962. These universities are the University of Ibadan, Ibadan 1948, the University of Nigeria in Suka, 1960, Ahmad Bello University Zaria, 1962, University of Ilefie, 
Then now Obafemi Aolo University 1962 and the University of Lagos 1962. Today these universities still maintain their pride of place even in the midst of stiff and healthy rivalry with myriads of other universities. Obafemi Aolo University stands 60 years old today. Within the six decades of its existence, the university has carved a niche for herself as a foremost university in the universe of uh, in the universe of knowledge, excellent excellent scholarship, and uh, innov innovative leadership. Can you clap for yourselves? Thank God for that. In recent times, it is worrisome to note that some of these globalizing universities are fast to unsavory decadence besetting the academia. While universities are not isolated from the decay in the society, efforts should be made by all stakeholders to uphold standards at all times. Obafemi Aolo University and other first generation universities should contribute to provide leadership for educational sector and champion the drive towards accelerated national development. Today, two eminent Nigerians from different walks of life are to be honored with honorary doctoral degree. That means especially congratulate today's honorary degree recipients who are His Imperial Majesty, KBAC, KBAC, Oba Adeye Enito, Ajaja II, only of Ife, who will be conferred with Doctor of Letters. The other recipient today is Chief Michael Ade Ojo, Chairman and Founder of Elizard Group of Companies, who will be conferred with Doctor of Business Administration. These uh, recipients are distinguished and prominent citizens of Nigeria who deserve such honor and recognition. I rejoice with them for the deserved uh, recognition. Furthermore, I feel highly elated to be part of this history making occasion of bestowing an owner of Ife in council and co-chairman of National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, who is also the custodian of the Odudua dynasty. The honorary uh, doctor degree this is a real opportunity, and my thanks go to the Almighty God for blessing me with such a real opportunity. God bless you. To our gra um, graduating students, studying for a university degree is a journey and not a destination. Education journey never ends, but always continues. Aspire to ad advance your studies and also to be the best that you can be in all your endeavors. Exploit all the opportunities that are readily available and within your reach. Abafemi Aolo University has equipped you with an essential skills, knowledge, and attributes to, attributes to be successful in your future endeavors. As you graduate and travel far and wide as global ambassadors of the university, you have become our eyes and ears. Do not forget where you are coming from and remember to pay back to your alma mater. Let me at this juncture express my special appreciation to His Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Yomi Obasanjo, GCOON, for his physical presence at this auspicious convocation ceremony where two eminent citizens of Nigeria are being honored with doctorate degrees and will be robbed by the visitor of the university inside. This in itself is historic. It is also pleasing to me, sir, that after one week of your maiden visit to my domain, I'm opportune to host you again at another historic occasion of learning eminent city. I would also like to see this opportunity to appreciate and thank the federal government, the great Ife alumni, and all our friends for their dedicated support. I wish to acknowledge the contributions of various donors, friends, and partners of the university. Finally, I congratulate the parents and guardians of, this, of all our graduating students 
on this joyous and uh, memorial occasion. I wish each and every one of us journey mercies as we return to our respective destinations. May Almighty Allah bless you all. Thank you for listening. respectfully invite the Prime Chancellor Owele Oscar Udoji to address the convocation. Great effect. Make some noise. Great Ife. Yes. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and visitor to the University, President Buhari, GCFR. Ably represented by the Vice President, His Excellency. Professor Yemi Osibanjo, GCONSAN. The Governor of the State of Osho, Alhaji Adeboyoge Oyetola, Your Excellencies, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ondo State, other State Governors, the Minister of Education, Malama Damwa Adamu ably represented, all the members of the Federal Executive Council here present, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, our Chancellor, Al Haji Dr. Yahaya Abubakar, CFR, the Etsunupe, and Eme of Bida, Your Royal Imperial Majesty. Habiesi, Oba, Babatunde, Eniton, Adeyeye, Ogunwusi, Ojajatu, the only of Ife. <laughs> Other Royal Highnesses, my Lord, spiritual and temporal. The Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Members of the OAU Governing Council here present, Pro Chancellors and Chairman of Governing Councils here present, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Eitope Ogumbo Dede, visiting Vice Chancellors, Rectors, and Provosts, Members of Senate of the University, very distinguished and proud parents, our graduates of today. Gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege and singular honor to welcome you all most heartily on behalf of the Council, Senate, and entire staff and students to 45th Convocation Ceremonies of this great university for the conferment of bachelor's degrees, postgraduate diplomas, higher degrees, and honorary degrees. It is a special convocation as this year also marks the 60th anniversary of this great citadel as a law providing for the establishment of this university was enacted on the 8th of June, 1961. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we must not miss the obvious fact that this convocation is happening against the backdrop of a most unexpected troubling outbreak and spread of the COVID-19. The pandemic, as we all know, has caused unprecedented disruptions in the ways we live, work, and interact. We thank God for preserving our lives and for giving us the grace to be able to hold the convocation physically, even if we have had to put measures in place that temporarily constrain our graduates, their families, well-wishers, 
and friends of the university. I wish to especially welcome the visitor, President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, ably represented by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, GCONSAN, to our university for these double celebrations. I also welcome most warmly our esteemed Chancellor, His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR, the Etsu Nupe who is presiding over this 45th convocation ceremony. While welcome His Imperial Majesty Kabiyesi Oba Babatunde Eniton Adeyeye Ogumushi Ojaja II, the Oni of Ife, I wish to draw attention to the fact that His Imperial Majesty is one of the two highly distinguished awardees of a great university. Let me congratulate the co-recipient, Chief Michael Ade Ojo, who is receiving the award of Doctor of Business Administration, Honoris Causa. The visitor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the new governing council was inaugurated on the 19th of April, 2021, with the privilege bestowed on me to serve as the co-chancellor and chairman of council of this great university. I wish to thank Mr. President for this great honor, accorded myself and other council members. I believe I speak the minds of my colleagues that our appointment is a call to service. At this crucial time in our nation in general and the educational sector in particular, we are those determined to work to invigorate the university in order to enable it to contribute its quota to national development and reposition our nation, Nigeria. We have literally hit the ground running, thinking and planning how to move this university forward, especially against the backdrop of drilling funding. In this regard, it is gratifying that only last Saturday, 4th December 2021, the Great Ife Advancement Foundation was launched at a grand and well-attended event that attracted distinguished alumni from all walks of life. We intend to seize the moment and the excitement of that event to leverage support from the vast alumni community of Great Ife in the days ahead. I wish to recall the best intention of the founding fathers of this great institution, which later metamorphosed into today's vision and mission a university that will be of highest demand standard. In fulfilling this vision and mission, the university has made remarkable impact in art, sciences, medicine, and technology space. Our products are making waves in all aspects of life, and the university has been known for cutting edge innovations and advancement. We are immensely proud of our products and how they continue to walk the journey of the university so far. Permit me, distinguished guests, to note that at this strategic juncture of 60 years, OAU must look inwards and think deeply how it can scale up its contribution towards improving our society. The bane of most African universities, in my view, is inadequate funding. The university must therefore find new ways of generating income to support cutting-edge research. While at it, the federal government needs to really allow universities the autonomy and liberty to raise income in acceptable norms and ways that are used by universities worldwide. Here yes, are celebrants of today who in the next couple of hours join the team in alumni of communication of community of this university. I congratulate you and wish you the best as you open another chapter in your life. I know you have already have all it takes to navigate the complexity of the world ahead of you. I encourage you to immediately join the great IFE alumni community, not just for the purpose of retroactive but also find a channel to give back. I know that some of you may say, but I am only just starting life. 
you should realize that the worth of your certificate lies not just in the reputation and recognition of your university, but also what you contribute in cash or kind to its elevation. It is said that little drops of water make a mighty ocean. After all, my belief is that if all alumni give a leave to token every month or year towards the advancement of the university, it will be used to support a lot of interventions. Annual gifts, donations, endowments, giving back to your departments and faculties, and so on, would no doubt make a huge difference. Apart from giving back, the alumni should make sure that they link up the university with programs, partnerships, and linkages that would be of immense benefit to the university. This convocation is epoch making in that we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the university and giving honorary degree awards to some most distinguished Nigerians. We have also had various departments, units, and faculties celebrating the uniqueness of this great university throughout the year. The 60th anniversary events have been held physically and virtually, celebrations happening not just here in Ife, but in major cities around the world. This convocation ceremony is the last that Professor Eitope Ogunbodede, the 11th Vice Chancellor of this university, will oversee as Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Professor Ogunbodede has distinguished himself with his selfless commitment to the university values, a hardworking man who has raised the bar to move the university forward. New and bold steps and innovations have been taken to make this university more efficient and proficient. He has strived to make the academic atmosphere conducive for teaching, learning, and importation of learning skills. On behalf of members of the council, staff, and students, and the entire university community, I wish to thank and wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Finally, my distinguished personalities, especially our dear graduates, I congratulate you most warmly on the successful completion of your course of study and for attaining this significant milestone in your life as you go out into the world to make a life and a living. I urge you to put in your best as nothing short of that would do. The journey may be rough and tough in view of the trying times in Nigeria and all over the world. You can rest assured that you will eventually make it. However, I commit you to the wise counsel that tough times don't last, but only tough people do. I wish you all the best. I congratulate our proud parents and guardians for witnessing today's event. I salute and acknowledge your financial and emotional commitment and investment towards the education of your children and wards. God will indeed reward you, and your efforts will not be in vain. Once again, let me thank you all again for honoring us with your presence and celebrating with us today. God bless you. Great effect. Thank you. Chancellor, sir, I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Yitokwe Ogubodeji, to address the convocation. The visitor, President and Commander in Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented here today by the Vice President, who is also doubling as the special guest of honor for this occasion, His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo, SAN, GCON, the Executive Governor 
of the State of Oshun, His Excellency Alaji Adeboyega Oyetola, the Executive Governor of Ondo State, and the Convocation Lecturer for today, His Excellency Arakunri Oluwarotimi Odunayo Akere Dolu, SAN. The Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Fayemi, ably represented the Deputy Governor of Oshun State, His Excellency Mr. Goyega Alabi, distinguished senators and honorable members of the House of Reps, here seated, the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, ably represented here, members of the Diplomatic Corps here present, the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, represented here, the Chancellor of this great university, His Royal Majesty, Alaji Dr. Yahaya Abubakar, CFR, the Esunupe, the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, Owele Oscar Udoji, his Imperial Majesty, Obadi Yeni Tumbaba Tunde Ugunwusi, Odaja II, the Oni of Ife, and Honorary of today. Other royal fathers and traditional rulers here present, visiting vice chancellors from other universities, former vice chancellors that are here present, the deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor Olubola Babalola, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Administration, Professor O.M.A. Daramola, the Registrar and Secretary to Council, Mrs. Margaret Idowo Moshule, the University Librarian, Dr. Femizaki Osoguto Ashe, the University Bossa, Mr. Samson Anyoshino, members of Council of the University, Chief Michael Adeojo, and Honorary Degree Recipient of today, Provost of Colleges, Deans of Faculties and Students, and of student affairs, members of Senate, directors of institutes and centers, heads of departments, deputy registrars and deputy bosses, members of congregation, the president, engineer Wale Olaleye, and members of the Great Ife Alumni Association, my laws, spiritual and temporal, presidents of professional bodies here present, members of the Students' Representative Council, honored graduates, parents and guardians of our graduates, all the security personnel here present, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Great Ife! Great Ife! I'm highly delighted to warmly welcome you all to this joyous occasion, the 45th Convocation Ceremonies of Obafemi Awolowo University which also coincides with the activities marking the 60th anniversary of our university. Permit me to specially welcome the visitor to the university, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is represented at this occasion by the Vice President of the Federation, His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo, SANGCON, also doubles as a special guest. We are exceedingly glad that you could find time, sir, out of your very busy schedule to bless us with your physical presence at this occasion. I acknowledge the various support that you have given to this university. We are indeed very grateful. Your interest and personal commitment to projects and programs geared at lifting the masses of our people out of poverty will forever remain indelible in the hearts of all Nigerians. I wish to also specially welcome to this great occasion the Executive Governor of the State of Oshun, His Excellency Alaji Adeboye Gawiyetola, who is indeed the chief host for this ceremony. We thank him for his interest in the development and progress of Obafemi Awolowo University. We appreciate his recent approval of the contracts for the rehabilitation of some roads in Ileife including the link road between OAU and our sister institution, the Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospitals Complex. I wish to assure His Excellency that the numerous joint programs between our university and the government of the state of Oshun, including the Yoruba Museum and World Heritage Center, will be pursued to fruition. The Executive Governor of Ondo State, His Excellency, 
Arakuni, Oluwa wrote to me, Oduan, you are carried to LUSAN. We'll be delivering the convocation lecture at this occasion. The title, When is a Nation? Exploring the social political crisis in post independence Nigeria is very apt and touches on our current challenges as a nation. On behalf of the university community, I wish to express our appreciation to you for the support you have been giving to OAU, your alma mater, and for accepting to deliver this year's convocation lecture. Your Excellency, we are very proud of your fearless approach to issues, commitment, and achievements. You have indeed shown to the entire world that you are a worthy alumnus of Obafemi Awolowo University, the only great affair in the universe. Another great affair is a country. Thank you. We are blessed to have His Royal Majesty, Alaji Dr. Yahaya Abubakar, CFR, the Esunupe, as the Chancellor of our university at this time. His Royal Majesty has assisted in no small measure to entrench the relative stability and peace that we have enjoyed on our campus in recent years. It is always a pleasure to have him in our midst. We wholeheartedly welcome you, Your Majesty, and long may you reign. I welcome all members of the University Governing Council, led by the Pro Chancellor Owele Oscar Udoji. We appreciate your insightful contributions. It is worthy of note that this is the first convocation to be officially witnessed by the current council, which was constituted in April this year, 2021. The last convocation ceremonies were held from Wednesday, December 11, to Saturday, December 14, 2019. The convocation ceremonies for 2020 would ideally have been held from December 10 to 12, 2020. The COVID-19 epidemic made this impossible. This situation was further compounded by the nine-month ASU strike which commenced in March 2020 and was called off in December 2020. For this convocation, we have 903 postgraduate, student, uh, postgraduate uh, degrees, degree awards, and then the total graduates for this year's convocation, undergraduate and postgraduate and diplomas, totaled um, 6,255. It is my pleasure to especially welcome our graduates and rejoice with you and your families on these noteworthy academic achievements. It is my hope that you will positively impact the various sectors of the Nigerian economy and help in resolving the challenges that we face as a nation as you begin another phase in your individual lives and career pursuits. Let me also quickly remind you that you are not trained only for the Nigerian environment but to also function adequately, efficiently, and effectively anywhere in the world. In other words, you are now global ambassadors of Great Effect. Congratulations. I, I also specially congratulate the parents and guardians of the graduates, spouses, friends, and colleagues for seeing their loved ones to this stage. It has been a long and tortuous journey, but you are rejoicing today because your efforts and the support that you have given to them have not been in vain. It is gratifying that at this convocation ceremony, the university will confer honorary degrees on two illustrious Nigerians. His Imperial Majesty, or Nyadeye Yenit or Gusi, or Jaja II, for his contribution to the preservation of Yoruba history, culture, traditions, and civilization, and for being totally committed to the overall social, political, economic, and cultural development of contemporary society. And Chief Michael Adeojo, who is noted for his chain of entrepreneurial successes, a list of the group of companies, Toyota Nigerian Limited and others, general contributions to various fields of human endeavors, and his enormous assistance to religious and sociocultural organizations. Chief Michael Adeojo surprised us two days ago with a substantial donation to the university that met an immediate need of our institution. I am not going to disclose because I didn't obtain his permission to actually do that. But just to say, sir, that we are indeed very grateful to the family. And I wish to also recognize uh, the presence of Mrs. Uh, Adeojo in this uh, assembly today. Can you please stand up for recognition?
So I also must say at this junction that I also have my wife here. So I think she also... Okay, she's okay. The university, in its 60 year history, this university has awarded only 97, con only 97 honorary degrees. In the 60 year history of Obafemi Aulawa University, the institution has awarded only 97 honorary degrees with Obafemi Awolowo University as one of the first recipients in 1967. So I rejoice with our honorees for this great honor that is well deserved. <laughs> University Growth and Development. Obafemi Awolowo University has achieved rapid growth and development, particularly in the areas of academic programs, research, infrastructural and human resources development. Some of the achievements recorded in the last few years uh, includes the introduction of new programs, undergraduate programs, and among these, we have um, successfully passed the stages of research verification and accreditation by the National University Commission for BSc Entrepreneurial Studies, Bachelor of Education, Adult and Lifelong Learning, Bachelor of Education, Educational Management, Bachelor of Science in Surveying and Geoinformatics, Bachelor of Science in Business Management, Bachelor of Library and Information Science. Seven additional programs also recently went through result verification by the National University Commission, and we are anxiously awaiting the result. These are Bachelor of Technology in Aeronautical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Mass Communication, Bachelor of Science in Broadcast Journalism, Bachelor of Science in Film Production, Bachelor of Science in Information Science and Media Studies, and Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition and Dietetics. The university is a leading institution in engineering, hosting the African Center of Excellence in Software Engineering Project. Some of the recent innovative postgraduate programs developed at the Master's, MSc, and Doctor of Philosophy levels include Computer Engineering, Intelligent System Engineering, Software Engineering, and Information System and Computer Science. The short-term courses include Cyber Security, cloud computing, data management, data warehouse, web technology, design and fabrication and machine components, robotics, mechatronics, machine vision, automobile maintenance, software application in drug prescription, inventory management, and research uptake and management. The university has also developed a robust entrepreneurship program supported by the TED Fund to improve the employability and ability of our graduates to contribute effectively to national development. This is accessible to all undergraduate students, staff welfare. The management of Obafemi Awolowo University has always made the welfare of staff a top priority. A new career structure has been approved by council, and non-teaching members of staff with adequate qualifications have been encouraged to ensure career progression and fulfillment. Other matters. The 2021-2022 admission exercise. The university will be combining two admission years for the next matriculation, 2019-2020 and 2020-2021, at the ratio of 60 and 40 percent respectively. The total number of candidates admitted is expected to be 7,500. The candidates admitted for both 2019-2020 and 2020-2021 admission years we will begin online registration in the last week of this month of December, and fresh students will resume physically in the first week of January. The last post-UME computer-based test for the 2020-2021 admission year was held virtually in October 2021 with the students writing the examinations from the comfort of their homes. It was very successful as in the previous year and we were able to avoid traveling down to Ife for the conduct of these uh, examinations. The death of Mr. Adegoke Timothy Oludare, student on the Executive Master in Business Administration MBA program. Mr. Adegoke Timothy Oludare, student on the Executive Master in Business Administration MBA program, was reported missing on 7th November 2021 
Mr. Adjegoke's corpse was eventually discovered by men of the Oshun State Command of the Nigerian police in a shallow grave. It was discovered that he had lodged at the Hilton Honors Hotel. The university administration is working closely with the law enforcement agents to unravel the circumstances leading to the death of uh, Mr. Adegoke. The university sympathizes with the family, recognizing also the tenacity and doggedness of the late Mr. Adegoke's wife, which assisted in no small measures in unraveling the circumstances of her husband's movement in Ileife. We pray for the repose of the soul of Mr. Adegoke and that God should grant the family the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. Update on the energizing education project supervised by the Rural Education Agency for the supply of electricity at OAU. The energizing education 8.03 megawatts power project has suffered major setback due to paucity of funds. The pending jobs including tunnel roads and drainages, LNG foundations and the firefighting foundations and firefighting system. The university now pays over 100 million every month on electricity and it is becoming increasingly difficult to cope. We would therefore like to appeal to the Federal Ministry of Power and the Federal Government to kindly give the Energizing Education Project in OAU the desired priority and ensure its speedy completion. From now to completion, if the funds are provided, what is required is just three months. And so we are appealing that this should be done in earnest. Anti-sexual harassment policy. The Obafemi Awolowo University, as a matter of policy, has zero tolerance for any form of sexual harassment. And there are mechanisms in place to ensure strict conformity. I am happy to inform you that OAU officially launched its revised anti-sexual harassment policy on 25th August 2021. In addition, there is an anti-sexual harassment implementation committee headed by an eminent professor, supported by faculty and departmental ash committees to ensure proper compliance and monitoring of the policy. Also, the university, through its various arms, especially the Center for Gender and Social Policy Studies, continuously carry out research to update knowledge and on sexual harassment issues in the society. For instance, there is an ongoing project on anti-sexual harassment initiated by OAU and extending to other Nigerian universities. An app is also being developed for monitoring and collating information on sexual harassment. OAU also recently played host to the shooting of Citation, a movie produced by Kunle Afolayan, which narrates the ordeals faced by a female postgraduate student who is forced to find a way to deal with a situation of sexual harassment from a male lecturer. The choice of OAU as a site for the choosing of the movie was based on our strong anti-sexual harassment policy and the endowment of OAU as Africa's most beautiful university campus. On the 9th of September 2020, our university played host to a webinar with the theme, Finding Safe Spaces for Female Students in Nigerian Universities. The decision to host the webinar emanated from a discussion with Mr. Shegwandeni, an alumnus of OAU, on his book, Naked Abuse, Sex, Sex for Grades, in African universities, and he was also a major facilitator of the webinar. Notable speakers at the four-hour webinar included His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo, GCON, SAN, the Vice President of the Federation, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Ovie Omoagege, Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, the 14th Emir of Kano, his Royal Highness Muhammadu Sanusi II, the First Lady of Ekiti State, and a host of others. This effort, I would like to once again thank His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimba, the GCON, SAN, for finding time to personally address participants at the virtual meeting. These efforts by OAU are all in a bid to address the menace of sexual harassment and create a safe learning environment for all. It is our hope that this kind of efforts will enable universities in Nigeria, Africa, and the world benefit maximally from quality education delivered in highly secured and safe environment devoid of sexual harassment and sexual violence. We continuously look forward to your support, sir, and collaboration in combating this societal menace. OAU has also started a staff 
staff housing scheme, uh, which occupies a land area of 123.4 hectares, 305 acres, which has already been acquired. Staff recruitment. The university is seriously short of personnel, and we have been putting pressure on the appropriate authorities to help redress this anomalous situation. It is becoming increasingly difficult for many departments and units to cope with the acute shortage of staff. The last recruitment exercise in OAU was in 2018. We are therefore pertinently appealing to the federal government to kindly approve the recruitment of new staff, or at least replacement of the significant number of staff lost in recent years to resignation, retirement, relocation, dismissal, death, and other causes. The 60th anniversary celebration. I will not deal much on this, but um, just to let us know that the, the that during the 60 years of the existence of this university, many people have willingly saddled themselves with the onerous responsibilities of using their resources to assist the university in various ways, thereby promoting the rapid development of the institution and also uplifting the society and humanity at large. Sixty of such individuals were honored as part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations at the launch of the Great Ife Advancement Foundation on December 4, 2021 in Lagos. The 60 by 60 by 60 Arts Exhibition will also be officially unveiled during this convocation. In the exhibition, 60 of the artists produced by OAU over the 60 years of its existence will exhibit their iconic artwork for 60 days. The university is sincerely grateful to the curatorial team led by Mr. Dotukopola, Dr. Ken Diadekwegba, and Mr. Emmanuel Oyeni, and all the contributing artists. We acknowledge the efforts of members of the Secret Anniversary Committee and the Ceremonials Committee, both chaired by Professor Charles Ukeje. We thank all who have contributed to the success of the 60th anniversary celebration. The Great Ife Advancement Foundation was formally and successfully inaugurated at the Marriott Hotel Ikeda, Lagos on Saturday, December 4, 2021. The Great Ife Advancement Foundation is a non-profit making, non-religious and non-political philanthropic oriented uh, foundation with the objectives of supporting the university. Renovation of lecture theaters. Dr. Akin Toye Akindele, an alumnus of OAU, founder and chairman of Platform Capital and chairman of Unicorn Group, is currently renovating the BOA, BOB, BOC, and Adjoshe Lecture Theatres, and a laboratory in the Department of Chemical Engineering. The estimated cost of the renovation is about 300 million. It is estimated that the work will be completed before the end of this year and that it will be commissioned in the second week of January 2021. Chief Senator Michael Ajegbo has also pledged to renovate the Pitt Theatre, estimated to cost $28 million. Echo Bank has also generously supported the renovation of this uh, hall, Odudua Hall, with a renovation of $42 million, with a donation of $42 million Naira. A group of alumni and friends, led by Dr. Wale Alade, uh, uh, Professor Michael Alade Bamawa, and uh, Dr. Abubakar Olasheni, and Professor Abba Tabekunde have been working assiduously on giving the university entrance and gate a befitting facelift. Let me also quickly add here that during the launching of the Great Fair Alumni Foundation, there were generous donations from our uh, alumni and friends. And one highlight of that uh, 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 launch was the donation of $1 million by an anonymous uh, uh, donor. So I think that deserves a better round of applause. So my prayer is also that our graduates of today will find it comfortable to donate, to donate $1 million you know, to Oba Femi Aulawa University. But it has to be money made legitimately. Constraints. 
In spite of the modest achievements, funding has been a major challenge to the university. Government subvention has been grossly inadequate for the running of the university. Research is sustained essentially through foreign grants and contribution to the Tertiary Education Trust Fund and contribution of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, which have helped in advancing the research culture of the university. I can see Professor Bamiro you know, as uh, one of the people uh, gracing this particular occasion. And he has worked assiduously on the uh, National Research uh, Fund. Um, he's a former vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan. I can also see a former vice chancellor of this university, Professor Oshinto, who is uh, also seated here. Appreciation. The university alumni and friends have been of great assistance in supporting various projects and programs in the university, and we are immensely grateful. This will be my last convocation ceremony as vice chancellor of the university. I thank you all for the support that you have given to me over these years. It has been very exciting and highly rewarding to serve as vice chancellor of a great university as OAU. I'm grateful to the visitor, President Muhammad Buhari GCFR, the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, the Chancellor, His Royal Majesty Alaji Dr. Yahya Abubakar CFR, all the members of the former council, led by Dr. Yemi Okumbi and the current council, led by Owele Oscar Udoji. My appreciation will be incomplete if I fail to once again acknowledge the constant support to this university of the Executive Governor of the State of Oshun, His Excellency, Mr. Adeboyega Oyetola. I am I am grateful to the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Damur Rashid, the Chairman Ted Fund, Alaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, and the Executive Secretary Ted Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, for their support and contribution to the growth of uh, OAU. I am also thankful to His Imperial Majesty, Obade Yeni Tambabakunde Ogunwusi Odaja II, the Orni of Ife, and other royal fathers, and the entire community for their support. My profound appreciation to all who have worked with me as principal officers, provosts, deans, heads of departments, directors, and heads of units. I thank the leaders, past and present, and the entire congregations of the OAU religious community for the wonderful support. I appreciate our hardworking staff, students, alumni, friends, donors, and other stakeholders for the overwhelming support that you have given to me and the current administration. I am eternally grateful. I must also appreciate my family who have stayed with me, keeping night vigil to ensure that the university is properly positioned for development. Conclusion, the Obafemi Awolowo University has to a large extent been able to fulfill its mandate via our core values of excellence, efficiency, integrity, hard work, and transparency. However, the university will continue to give priority to harnessing and adapting modern technologies in the implementation of its objectives and also placing great emphasis on keeping pace with modern technological developments. We are very confident that OAU will continue to move rapidly to higher levels, particularly with the support of all stakeholders. And what is happening today is a testimony to this very fact. As you graduate today, please remember that it is your responsibility to advance the good image and achievements of your alma mater and contribute your quota to the continued progress of Great Affair, your university. We thank you all for coming and for your generous attention. Great Affair! <laughs>
Well, let me not uh, waste time on this technology. I, it's not working. You say it's working, it's working. Oh, yeah, this is working, it's not working. I'm sure this is working. So, uh, Your Excellency, the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and visitor to the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe, President Muhammadu Buhari. GCFR ably represented by our Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, ICN GCOL. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, sir, permit me, sir, to adopt the protocol that has been ably ably established by speakers, speakers, speakers before me. All of them are done very well. So I, I'm sure I'm sure everybody will allow me to adopt that protocol. Eh? But that is not without me saying to you great if yes. great if yes. greatest of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest eh? I thank you all my lecture is being distributed, so I'm, I don't want to take the time of uh, the Vice President and other distinguished uh, personalities who are here. But let me start by congratulating our Vice Chancellor, Professor Tokpe, I congratulate you and staff, students, and alumni of our great alma mater, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe. This university is our pride. I thank you all for sustaining the dream. We must salute courage of those whose activities hold out promises of hope for a troubled fatherland. A university, just as if it has done, must live up to its charter of establishments or lose relevance. IFE has lived up to that charter and we should all be proud of it. For us in IFE, it is learning and culture. If uh, for learning and culture. This beautiful ambience attests to pledges that have been kept over the years. All of those who have passed through here have done wonderfully well. The presence of our great alumni as leaders in all walks of life is an index or the fulfillment of the dream. We are celebrating 60 years of existence and we are all happy. Are you not happy? Are you not happy? 60 years. 60 years of uncommon achievement. 60 years of serenity. 60 years which has transformed this haven of intellection to the most beautiful campus on the African continent. This is a pride, if it. it should therefore not surprise anyone that the contribution of this university has been phenomenal. The success story that the IFE support the theory on the possibility of achieving greatness with collectivization of aspiration towards an objective. From conception to actualization, the IFE vision inspires across the country and beyond. 
so long for Ife. You can see all I've said about Ife in my lecture. Ife, as I said, is a pride. Ife, a citadel of learning, must justify, like others, their existence. Janjantin buildings do not make a university. I do agree. The major preoccupation of any institution of learning should be the constant interrogation of issues of existence in pursuit of happiness. I hope you all agree with me. So I want to thank the management for providing this platform. I thank you, which are for citizens and foreigners alike, the opportunity to ventilate views, not only on the immediate challenges of nation building, currently experienced the polity, a situation which forbids on towards occurrences carried in the womb of time, but to also compare the seemingly deplorable experience here with happenings in the global arena. I suspect very strongly that my choice of lecture is anchored not only on holding an important political office, or your choice of me coming to give this lecture is not because I hold this in prior office. It's certainly not. It's almost probable that your invitation to me, Mr. Vice Chancellor and the Council, must be because of my passive role over years and a crucial moment in the course of our determination to serve the people in the best and most effective way possible. We have never been under any illusion, even before we mounted the saddle to serve, that the task of nation building is vastly diverse, in a vastly diverse geopolitical space, we require continuous, consistent, and sincere engagement at all levels. Quick fist mentality must be avoided to achieve amity. True deliberative governance in a political arrangement with deepen heterogeneity. The attempt to always adopt approaches largely cosmetic will never achieve any meaningful purpose. We must go to the roots of the noticeable dysfunction within a view, with a view to finding lasting solution to the perennial problems bedeviling this country, Nigeria. In this lecture, we want to provide solution, not new. Most of the things I'm going to say will have been said one time or the other, by one person or the other. But mine is going to be a reason view we should act as guide to the redemptive pathway leading to peace and prosperity. Great effect. I have come back home to join other illustrious and proud alumni and alumni to ruminate on the current challenges in the country. Welcome me back home. This is my home. All of us here are proud. We are sad boldly that Nigeria can fare much better than, than it is the case presently. I said we don't agree. We can do much better. Do you agree? Do you agree? Whatever we are facing now, the fault is definitely not in our stars. The fault is in ourselves and we must take it. I gave introduction of Nigerian situation where I concluded that no nation survives on adults from other climes. You can never continue this way. Taking handouts, whether from China, from anywhere, no nation survives on that. We must find a way, at least in the country, to be able to do what we want to do with our own resources. It's important for us. Yes, 
I said countries exist as geopolitical I mean, uh, entities with attendant social legal consequences. There also exist proper delineation defining boundaries and scope of influence and obligation. I've gone all through this as part of introduction and, and I came back that the very logic of colonizing find currency in subjugation and and this is what we are faced in this country today. It's all part of what it's been so it's been long. We should have gotten out of it. But this subjugation is there and all of us can see it. And that is going through the introduction. And I said that social mobility on a civilized society, people move from one place to the other. This happens quite frequently. And with that, you can lose your identity. Loss of identity is too big a price to pay for new social order. This is what has happened to us in this country. We, want to, we are gradually losing our identity. And it is not the right thing to do. Any society which suffers such misfortune can only develop to the extent to which the logic of domination and dependence permits. The moment you lose your identity, you are in trouble. I, I went ahead that we have the capacity to challenge, I mean, to face our new challenges. This country has great capacity to face our new challenges. We, in this country today, we should not suffer any grand delusion of a prosperous future hinge on only on hope. Hope cannot guarantee future. We must be prepared to work. Don't you agree? We must. It is my view that what, we had, what has happened in Africa generally has shown that post-colonial states are artificial creation and they are just mere delineation or map that do not explain our identities. Nigeria is just a geographical location. For me, our identity is not shown. But we have seen some states in Africa that are making some improvement from South Africa to Zimbabwe, Namibia, Botswana, Angola. The struggle to evolve nation from geopolitical entities created by the invasion forces appear perennial. Yeah, they, keep, they still keep suffering. This is what we see. We see what we are, what, you see what we are witnessing in Ethiopia today. You see the problem everywhere where you have had this problem of uh, subjugation. And I concluded, I said the aspiration for real development will continue to be a mirage until and unless African states reassess the current configuration with a view to encouraging truly autonomous states to adopt policies and programs designed for full emancipation of their people. You must work towards emancipation of your people. The major problem of diversity will become then an advantage if properly harnessed. Diversity is not something that is wrong. Nigeria can take advantage of its diversity if it is properly harnessed. We are a great country, but what are we doing now? Are we moving towards greatness? It's left for you to answer. You are all intellectuals. This is a garden of PhD holders and co. So I went ahead to do, talk about Nigeria experience. I look at the history of Nigeria, talk about the constitution, 1914, all, all everything uh, when Nigeria was brought together. And I said that all the adventures in constitutional administration of the colonial territory failed to take into account the peculiarities of the people who have been forced to live together under one central administration in this country. This is my, this is my view. You might not agree. All 
and I mean all the constitutions, all the constitution from 1963, which is the best constitution that we ever had. 1963 constitution is adjusted to be the best legal instrument so far. But all of them, what came after was more or less to corral us together without any direction. Nigeria today, we seem to be moving like seaweeds, floating. We don't know where to. If you have seen seaweeds before, you know what I mean. I just carried along. We don't know where to. I pray we are not doomed. I say I pray we are not doomed. Uh, the nationalists, those early nationalists, have done their best, but they have left. It was, we note, I noted in my speech, some of, most of them, H.O. Davis, Alakija, Abama Collin, all of them. The colonial structure and gender peace and economic posterity because they were committed in their own time. I mentioned about the formation of Ebuya Modudua by Chief of Maulawo. And I went ahead to talk about regionalism and what we have gained as region. Because when you had this great region, there was competition, expected competition among regions. And he tried. Western region took the bull by the horn, started free education, all of us enjoyed. Taxes were paid. If you didn't send your child to school, you are going to be in prison. So everything went on. You saw cocoa, cocoa has came up. You saw pyramids of uh, uh, granite in the north. You saw coal in the east. Midwest came up. So everybody had, it was very competitive. Great idea, but we have lost it now. All the three nations, the regions before independence were, and I'm with, I want to say this, they were on the course to greatness before the military interregnum. We were on the course to greatness. You saw what our forefathers did here before the military interregnum. So, then, no region depending on the federal government for survival. Then, those of us who are here who are old enough will note, no region then depending on the federal government for survival. The principle of federalism were adhered to this is where we are going. Principles of federalism. You know then, each region had its own judiciary. Western region had its own court, court of appeal. Then, no other region had. We were the one that had the court of appeal until all disruption came and we now have a federal court of appeal and go. Oh, Oh, I mean, Western region had its own court of appeal in Lebanon. And the military interregnum, as I said, did not help. Military interregnum, interregnum introduced a unitary system of government in a country as vast as, this, as Nigeria. Vast and diverse. Very diverse. How do you want to have a unitary type of government? We ran through this problem over and over in the 70s, 80s, 90s, before creation of states from 12 to, we are now 36, from 7 to 12, 12 to 19, 19 to 36. That's how we moved. So many states, some cannot survive. This is what we have done. The oddity was extended to the local government. And that led to creation of our 774. I think so, local government, which they also put in a constitution. What was that to serve? Local government in a constitution. What was that to serve? But this was what we met. The military was more focused in 1999 to run away from government. And that is how they, 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 we continue to grow under the heavy burden imposed by the inability of political leaders to come to terms 
we won near impossibility of sustaining the current structure. How do we come to time? Can we sustain this structure? Is it possible? Those are the issues. And I tweeted in my paper. And I said to me, what manner of, I, I spoke about our universities. I spoke about the fact that we are 200 million. And today, we, are, we have a police command in a nation as vast as Nigeria. What is the sense in it? Let us ask ourselves. To, one is to have a single police command, one manner of intelligent gathering will exist in, in what we have today. Let me ask, even my brother who is here, who is in fact, or indeed, the chief security officer of his state? Am I? Is he? Is Angin? You have, do you control the police totally? Do you? This has led us to have to, have to create Amoteku in this region. And we are proud of Amoteku. <laughs> we have to take the bull by the horn. In spite of opposition, and we are determined that we will not leave our lives and properties in the hands of those who don't want to protect us. We will protect ourselves. The problems we have is over centralization of authority in the center. Let me say it OR. Authority is over centralized in the center, in the hands of the Vice President. I know I know you will laugh, but Mr. Vice President is a professor of law. I'm sure you all know. And all of us, when, even when we are in court, we learn evidence from him. But he's also a constitutional expert. And I'm sure he will agree with our position. We are suffering in this country from mutual suspicion. Don't you believe? The people don't trust the government. The government don't trust the people. Even within the government, they don't trust themselves. And, and, we have been talking about pandemic, pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, but we have left one pandemic that has existed in Nigeria and is still there. And that is what I call CDS, Credibility Deficiency Syndrome. <laughs> Credibility Deficiency Syndrome, that is the pandemic that we are facing in this country. We don't trust ourselves. No serious foundation has been laid for development. And none can be laid for development if there is mutual suspicion by every ethnic nationality which form the country. Can we lay any serious foundation for development? The way we are now. Talk to yourselves. Think about what I'm saying. Everybody is suspicious of each other. Is that not so? So can we do it? There are agitations here and there. We try to pacify each other. We paper cracks, major cracks, where we have to pull down a building and put another structure. We try to paper the crack. How do you think we will survive? Nigeria must return to the path of rectitude, where all ethnic nationalities are given enough space to swear as far as their ingenuity can take. Everybody, let each and every one of us try. Show what you can do. 
That's the important thing. That's where we are going. And that's led me to the question, what is a nation? A nation can come in many ways. You see it in my lecture there. Because you look at the Latin word NATO, it refers to tribe or group of people. Yes. Nigeria, we are a group of people. So many tribes. But the question I'm asking here is that, are we a nation? Answer, are we a nation? That, that's it. That's where we are. There are countries that are heterogeneous. But there are countries that are not. And there are nations. We don't, all, of our, all of us don't have to be Yoruba. We don't all have to be Hausa. Neither do all, all, of, all of us have to be Igbo. But there are countries that are diverse as us, but they are a nation. They have built a nation. I, 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 I tell you that in India and South Africa, they present unique examples for us to see. Look at India and South Africa. How multiculturalism can be a veritable advantage. India, with over a billion, has now allowed has not allowed any distraction arising from this fact. Over a billion people. That is where you have Hindu. They are 78.8. That is where you have Muslim. That is where you have other religion. So many ethnic groups. Every major religion is represented. India relies on a cultural background for advancement. The culture of resistance was used during the colonial struggle. That has brought them together. I... There are so many examples, no, not only India. I can give example of South Africa, just South Africa here now. It has five major racial groups, five. The black South Africans who are 76 point something percent, white South Africans who are 9.1, colored South Africans who are 8.9, India South Africa 2.5, and others less than 5 percent. The South African experience is still fresh. You all participated in it. Except you are too young to remember. I remember here in Ife, when we were here in the early 70s, so many South Africans were here on scholarship. All of, most of them were classmates. They all migrated here to read. They have gone back. It's an experience you can see. Apartheid system drew widespread condemnation then. But the country is redefining itself. That is how a country must move. The challenges there are enormous. But I want to look at what is the Nigerian conundrum. What is Nigerian conundrum? Yes, we have over 250 ethnic groups. Few are dominant. I you know the dominant ethnic groups. Have you don't know them? Who are they? The Nupes? Are they, are they dominant? <laughs> I, I mentioned those who are dominant there. Our country today remains underdeveloped because of our current structure. Take it from me. This structure cannot survive. There must be a change. A structure where insecurity has become an endemic issue. Many more people have been here today. Some people are afraid to travel. It has become an endemic issue. You, some will say about insecurity all over the world. Any dispassionate analyst can adduce some reason readily has been responding for current crisis. Everybody will come with theories. For me, this country, the 1999 constitution and its mal contents, it is a constitution that tells lie about itself. There was never a time that we people gave that constitution. Were you part of the constitution? No. Were you part of the constitution? No. So, it's an imposition by the military. We must seize the opportunity to see whether, 
to see how we sit, to have a constitution that will give to ourselves, that we can say, we, the people of Nigeria, gave that constitution. That is the opportunity that we have been waiting for. And the time is now. The time is what? If not now, when? And if not us, who? We are the ones who do it. We must do it. I say that because people come up and tell you that Nigeria, our oneness or Nigeria is not negotiable. Who says? Who says? We must sit down to negotiate. Some of us believe in one Nigeria. Because I give myself an example to the world. Great example to the world. I believe in one Nigeria. I'm married to an Igbo lady. So if there's no one Nigeria, where will my wife go? And her children, they love her more than myself. So I'll be the only one here. They will not follow her. Why wouldn't there be one Nigeria? I'm asking. My first son is married to an Igbo man, Igbo woman. Why wouldn't there be one Nigeria? Another one is married to a Delta woman. So why wouldn't there be one Nigeria? Where am I going to go? So I'm the only pure Yoruba man in my house. So I have to believe in one Nigeria, and I so believe in it. But I'm saying that even with my children, we should sit down and negotiate. I'm telling you, anybody telling us that it's not negotiable, it's not being fair to us. You will read what I said there about this negotiation. Nobody is saying we leave Nigeria. But I'm saying that a situation where revenue allocation is being decided in a way that is warped cannot be. A situation where in Abuja licenses are given for mining on your land without reference to you should not be. I get to those states, somebody comes, he's got a license to be mining. I don't know about it. And they are taking money somewhere else. That cannot be there must be mutual arrangement. Carry us along. You don't give license to come and mine in my land without reference to me. It's not a good idea, but something has to be done. I and I and I know that at the end of the day, that I remember the federal government through the office of the Attorney General is asking all states to remit stamp duty <laughs> collected on contracts awarded by state government to it. Why don't we ask? How would that be? You are work contract, the stamp duties come, I give back to you. How? Something is wrong. Our inland waterways is no longer even safe. The federal government wants to control our own inland waterways. It's not the right thing to do. We must devolve power. That is when there is a nation. When you devolve powers. The powers the federal government is exercising today is so much. The, the exclusive list is way out of what the federal government can handle. You must devote power to the constituent, the states that make up the federal government. The federal states must be properly recognized. This is where we stand. So that's when I say, when indeed is the nation. This country exists as a legal fact. We can't run away from it. Transition between country and the nation appears tortuous. It's a tortuous journey. You have to go through my paper and enjoy what I've said. But because of time, I have to rush through. It's a tortuous journey. True statesmen will work at it until dreams become a reality. So many statements are here, and I uh, bear witness to the fact that 
Mr. Vice President is a true statesman. You must work at it. If you want economic prosperity, we have to work at it. And a multi country can transit to a nation. I gave four areas. You'll be shocked at the first one. My first one is that we must be prepared to adopt a language acceptable to all of us. In Walimu, did it in Tanzania. In Yerere, he adopted a language that was not his. I look forward to a southerner come 2023 becoming the president of this country. It will be, it will be, we must rotate. I'm saying it's not a matter of joke. We are determined and we'll give it all it takes. The power must rotate to south. So and, I, I, and, I, and I'll be happy if I see a Sadhana who becomes the president and says to us, we are adopting Hausa as a common language. There's nothing wrong in it. We all will not learn and speak Hausa. I'm told it's the easiest one to understand. Because it's spoken across all regions. Even Hausa Nigeria. So why not? The Fulanese, who are more dominant, they are few. Most of them who speak Hausa, they don't speak Fufude. Is it not true? Those of you who are here who are from there tell us most Fulanese don't speak Fufude, they speak Hausa. So, what is wrong in it? A southern president can say so. Language, medium of communication is important. We must agree on national ethos, set it out one by one. A lot of us will pray by, and one of them should be hard work. Hard work must be compensated. Patriotism, honesty, which is very, is not some, is not common. Or is it common? Honesty, is it common? So it's left to you to tell us. Honesty and what we have come to do here should be part of our ethos. Thirst for knowledge. That must be thirst for knowledge. All of us must. Is Nigeria a nation? That is where I conclude. Nigeria to me is an amalgam of ethnic and nationality. We must come together to agree to form a union. We must come together. We, must, we cannot be corralled. Let us sit down and discuss. The meeting must not be compelled. We must freely come to the table and discuss. All these things group must have an understanding on the best way to collaborate for the good of all. The agreement freely entered into will be reduced into writing. That's why people are talking about restructuring all of our meeting. That meeting is important. Oh, the Faudi, let you know you. Talk about Bob, a decorum Bob. For me, for me, the arrogant posturing that the unity of this country is not negotiable must be jettisoned for a more humble and intelligent response to natural agitation against discontent. People are not happy, they are throwing death to, their, to them. It's not right. Let's be humble. Let us all sit down and discuss. It's important. This country, this country, unity of this country is negotiable and we'll sit down to negotiate it. That's what matters. Nigeria's transition to nationhood 
will have started in if all the points I have tried to make, about four or five of them there, we address it. But for me, it's not easy to go back to the six geopolitical zones. It's not very easy. It's a big task. But that's probably the most ideal. That is probably the most ideal. I will still have it if it's possible. But somebody has said to me, is on those states ready to subjugate itself to Western region. And I asked my people, you get answers that you cannot believe. Most people believe that, oh, I don't say must stay. Okay, let it stay. But we we'll all sit down to consider this. Let's look at it. Every geopolitical zone should act. We can still run it. Every geopolitical zone will act as a unit of representation for all the sectors within it. Yes, we might not say so that now it's only the geopolitical zone, but each geopolitical zone will represent everybody in it. This is possible. Each geopolitical zone can decide to have its own APS court, which will determine all matters affecting it. So that the federal court, the federal judge will take care of issues in the exclusive legislative list. Why not? Why must cases of murder go to Supreme Court? Why don't we determine it? Even at the geopolitical zone or the state Supreme Court, why not? Or state court of appeal, why not? We are wasting time. We are just carrying so many cases to the Supreme Court for no just cause. For no reason. And cases will stand so many years. The geopolitical should be allowed to take charge of economic activities. This is my own suggestion. Taxes were appropriate. It should take over most of the roads. The roads we are attacking federal. If money is devolved to the state, the state can maintain those roads and they will be closely maintained better than it is now. Look at Ife Ibadan. Look at here to anywhere. Go travel everywhere. It takes years to ever make any good road in the south. Several years. So, how do we continue that way? I believe that the federal government should divest itself of its burdens, too many things, and allow the component units to flower. Allow the component units to flower. The states make the nation. The states, all the geopolitical zones must be allowed to flower. I am saying that let the units control their resources. People have been talking about resource control. You have gold. Virtually everywhere. The mineral resources that are in Nigeria are too many. There is no state that is not blessed. No state. Did you ever hear about gold in Zafara? Today now they are, they are fighting themselves there. Gold. And they are here again in Osu, not allowing boy Boyega to rest. They are carrying his gold away. And I know boy, uh, my brother, governor of the state of Osu, is up to the task that this gold will not go again from Malaysia to anywhere. So there are a lot of things that we have. I believe that we must do away with the culture of laziness where some people want to sit in a place and appropriate what does not belong to them. You want to appropriate what does not belong to you and be the one to divide it, it does not make sense. We must call it off. If you are the one that take share what belongs to you, I can, I can assure you, your people will be encouraged to work more assiduously because they know the money they will make will come to them. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if the money we get from oil go to the Niger, develop, Niger Delta development areas, the people will allow the oil companies to try because the money is coming to them. But they don't know where the money is going. It's just fine off, and you expect them to keep quiet. It's not easy. 
and as we see it, no, if we do it, no unit will depend on bailout or handout. I don't have to divorce secrets, but I must press Mr. Vice President here, who is a chairman of the National Economic Council for his numerous fight to get the state to get money to do many things. You have tried for us. I thank you, sir. Thank you. And I believe that largely this indolent bureaucracy, which has become part of the problem of this country, will be a thing of the past if the states or regions are allowed to operate very well. If the geopolitical zones are organized, if civil service will respond to needs of the public, redundancy will be discouraged. We will have solved most of the current problem if we go through this lecture and see some of our humble submission. This is where I see it. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want to thank you and the Governing Council for inviting me. Oscar, your own is not Bonavena. But the Owele, I thank you. Chancellor, I thank you to all uh, council members, government council members, the new ones. I don't know their names. I thank all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you profusely for this opportunity. I'm eternally grateful to my alma mater for the training. I'm grateful for this training. I thank you all for your presence. Thank you. It is time to confer the honorary degrees. Chancellor Sir, the Council and Senate of Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, have resolved that the honorary degree of the university be conferred on His Imperial Majesty, Oni Enito, Babatude Akonde Oguusi, Ojaja II. Chancellor, Oni Oguwusi was an astute and experienced chartered accountant and a captain in the industry of land development before his accession to the esteemed and prestigious throne of Oni of Ife. He is a noble and foremost traditional ruler in Western Nigeria and an epitome of Yoruba culture and traditions. I, therefore, call upon the public orator, Professor F.A. Omidire, to present His Imperial Majesty, Oni Enito, Babatude Akonde Ogusi, for the award of the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. The visitor of Bafemi Awolowo University, His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari. The Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibuajo, SAN GCON. The Chancellor, Alaji Yahaya Abubaka Etsunupe. The Pro Chancellor of Afmi Aulo University, Owele Oscar Udoji. The Vice Chancellor of Bafemi Aulo University, Professor Eyitope Ogunbe Nro Ogunbo Dede. 
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, well wishers of this great university. I want to welcome His Excellency, Governor Adebo Egawiyetola, Governor State of Oshun, as well as His Excellency, Arakuni Akiridolu, Governor of Ondo State. Gentlemen of the press, I welcome everyone as we celebrate the 60, 60 years of advancing knowledge, and I stand before you to present His Royal Majesty, Obaade Yeye Enita. Baba Tunde Akande Ogunwusi Ojaja II the Oni of Ife Arole Odua for the confirmation of the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa of this foremost citadel of learning and culture. Chancellor Sir, I must confess that it was with great trepidation that I accepted this daunting assignment to be the public orator charged with the responsibility of presenting the citation of the Arole Odua before this magnificent assembly gathered in this not less emblematic chamber eloquently baptized as Odudua Hall. The reason is not far-fetched, Your Excellencies. Here I am, a common mortal with no antecedent credential as a certified Araki, yet elected to speak, nay, to recite the citation of an immortal, daring, so to say, in the strictest British tradition required by this kind of ritual, to order the Arole Odua himself to stand and remain standing. While I present him to the whole world for this award, Ha, Chancellor, sir, Ishela Leromio, what you have given me is a daunting task. I take courage, however, in the nobility of the cause at hand, and I embrace with gratitude the honor done to me as the one entrusted with such a mission. I therefore stand ready, distinguished Chancellor, so here I go, my lords. Any unwary chronicler may assume that all Niade Yeye only attained national and international fame and recognition after he ascended to the river throne of Orni as the custodian of the house of Odudua. But alas, such an assumption would be far from the truth. As his biography reveals and his biological okay, and his biological sire, Baba Oba Oluropo Gungusi always affirms, oh, Niade Uya, he was born into greatness as someone predestined to be great. And this is eloquently attested though by the names and attributes he was given at birth as we intend to expound. Born to the family of Prince Oluropu and Madame Uralo Gungusi of the GSC ruling house Agbedegbede compound in the ancient city of Ileife, the cradle of Yoruba race, the family history reveals that his birth had been predicted long before he was conceived, and his name bears eloquent tribute to that. He was named Eniito, child of history. Babatunde desire has returned. And no one could have predict, predicted what sort of history the new arrival would represent better than his royal grandfather himself, who named the newborn Ade Yeye, meaning in the deepest assonance of Ileife idiom, Onikodein Lo Yelo Yoba. This new arrival is the one who befills the throne. Thus pronouncing him spontaneously and simultaneously, the de facto and the jury prince héritier and heir apparel to the crown that belongs to the GSC ruling house. Oh, Niadeye brought impressive credentials to the throne when he was announced on the 25th, 26th of October 2016 
as the only elect. And having completed to the delight of all and satisfaction of the ancestors every prescribed right of the land, he was duly crowned as the 51st Orni of Ife on 26th October 2016 at the young age of 41. Young, strong, dedicated, dynamic, wise, and visionary. second instantly became the darling of his generation who see in him an exemplary personality endowed with the divine attributes of royalty. His achievements are too many to be named here. We know him as an astute and experienced technical accountant and captain of industry. We know his so many outstanding initiatives in the land and in Nigeria as a whole since he became the only. But to us in this university, we appreciate Oni Adeyeye as the only who has brought the town closer to the gown. The only who has made the university feel that it is loved by the community. Oni has brought a lot of direct impact in the land of this university and this land as a whole. And we can attest to that by looking at his record as a royal diplomat by excellence and a resourceful, resource, resourceful philosopher king who is very passionate about the preservation of the age long Yoruba history, culture, and traditions. It is on record that Oni has restored great respect to the institutions of Obership as the Ekeji Orisha, endowed with semi divine powers to advocate for his people. And we see how effective his advocacy has been, even with the Romanes, when he dealt with the coronavirus in this land. <laughs> Chancellor, sir, although this is not the first honorary doctorate degree to be conferred on Oni Ogunwusi, the Doctor Honoris Causa that is about to be awarded to the Oni under your hands this day comes with a historic label. Let me explain, sir. Today, Oni Adeyeyeni Tababatunde Akande Ogunwusi will join the exalted rank of his predecessor Onis to be awarded the Doctor Honoris Causa of this great university. Sir, may I in excess crave your indulgence to remind this august assembly that this same honor was accorded to Oniade Soji Tade Nikawa Remi during the first convocation ceremony of the then University of Ife in 1967. While his successor, Oni Okwade Shijuade Olubushe II, was equally so honored in 1986. Our collective act today, therefore, is a historic fulfillment of our avowed vocation as a university that conjugates knowledge with tradition. Chancellor Sir, in concluding my citation today, because this is an unusual moment when we honor an unusual personality, permit me, sir, to break or at least to bend a bit the established protocol as ritually mandated at an occasion like this. This is because I have a message for my king and it can only be delivered to him in poetic form as dictated by our exalted culture. Kabiesi, le simo guwoni, oku ori re oni o, akandi o le walo wo, o jaja kofi di o te jale, ala she orisha, o ke le nye more, oni ti go ke se mene ko we eru se gim pa o ti ti ari kile mi, o lori alade, as the endless teachings of our mothers always drum it into our consciousness since our most tender age, the merit of the messenger is confirmed only in the quality of the message. Therefore, Kabye Shialashe, permit me to declare at this point the accomplishment of my humble mission here by singing to you in the language of our Ife progenitors. That 
that's done, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, I can now acquit myself of the final and most delectable part of my duty here today. Most distinguished Chancellor, as I take my bow from this podium, while the royal awardee step forward to receive a well-deserved accolade, it is my up utmost pleasure to invite all to stand up as I present to you a great man, a passionate citizen, a compassionate king, a dedicated leader, a proud son of Odudua, the visionary progeny of the Yoruba nation, the 401st Irumale of the Yoruba pantheon, His Imperial Majesty, Onyadeyeyi, Enito, Babatunde, Akande, Ogunwusi, the Oni of Ife, and Aroli Odudua for the confirmation of the Doctor of Letters on all these cars of this university. Thank you, Kabis. <coughs> Confirmed of honorary degree by the authority vested in me as the Chancellor and in accordance with the provision of the university statute, one confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Letters. Doctor of Letters. Merbutu. Kabiesi. Already Kausa of Abafemi Aolo University, Ilefe, with the right and privileges attached thereto. Congratulations, Kabiesi. God bless. <laughs> All court seats still extended. May I humbly, after the robe, Most respect invites the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshiba Joesien, to please, with due respect, join His Imperial Majesty on this historical occasion of the confinement of and Your Excellency, the Governor of the State of Oshun, to please also join. Thank you very much, sir. And Arakori. Roti me or dry like it. Shall we all say happy and see you? University, Ilefe. 
have resolved that honorary degree of the university be conferred on Chief Michael Adeojo. Chancellor, Chief Adeojo is the chairman, founder of Elizabeth Group of Companies. He is an accomplished business magnate an entrepreneur par excellence and an industrialist of no mean repute. I therefore call upon the public orator, Professor B.S. Afolabi, to present Chief Michael Adeojo for the award of the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, DBA Honoris Causa. The visitor, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibahu, GCON. The governors here present, the governor of the state of Oshu, and the governor of the Sunshine State, you are welcome, sir. The Chancellor. Dr. Yaya Abubakar, the Pro Chancellor and other members of the Government Council of Obafemi Awolo University, the Vice Chancellor and other principal officers of the university, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present to you with a great honor for me having to stand here to present Chief Michael Ade Ojo. To me, this is an honor unprecedented because it is an opportunity for me to see eye to eye to somebody I've secretly admired from a distance. I present Chief Adeojo. Chief Michael Adeojo was born on the 14th of June, 1938, in the Laramoki in Ondo State, to the family of Chief Solomon Ojo and Chief Mrs. Beatrice Ademolawe Ujo. He had his primary education at St. Michael's Anglican School, Ilaramoki, after which he proceeded to the Great Imade College Award under the airship of Pa Adekule Ajashi. This was in 1954. And 1958, he concluded this assignment. And he went on an 18-month course at the School of Agriculture, Akure, after which he worked briefly with the, as a laboratory technician in the Ministry of Agriculture, more plantation, Ibadan. Chief Adi Ojo then proceeded to the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, in 1961, where he studied business administration and graduated with a second class upper division in 1965. <laughs> On leaving the university, Chief Adi Ojo started working his working career at, with the CFOO. He later joined the Federal Ministry uh, Inland Revenue Department. After that, he moved to the British Petroleum Nigeria Limited between 1967 and 1971, where he distinguished himself as the be company's best sales representative at that time. In fulfillment of his resolve to establish his own organization within 10 years, of graduation, Chief Michael Adeojo abandoned the certainty of a plum colonial job with, for the uncertainty of a private business. The result was the establishment of Elizabeth Independent Agencies, a family business co-founded with his late wife, Chief Mrs. Wuraola Ojo, in 1971. This was later incorporated into Elizabeth Nigeria Limited in 1973 a company dealing in motor spare parts, vehicle sales, and services. This business remains an unsurpassed success in Nigeria's automobile industry to date. Today, the company which Michael, Chief Michael Adeo just started with one support staff in 1971 has grown to become a conglomerate with several subsidiaries, including Toyota Nigeria Limited, Elizade University, 
Elizade Ottoland, or King Travels Limited, or do our Creations Limited, among many others. In addition, he is the chairman of various companies. He is also the director of several organizations, including Maristem Securities, First City Monument Group, Echo Bank Nigeria PLC, and a host of others. The string of entrepreneurial successes, this string of entrepreneurial successes, informed his invitation to South Africa in November 2005, where he presented his entrepreneurial experience to an international audience. He is an incredible lover of his people. He transformed Singuan Deadly, so to say, a Lara Moki from a village into a vibrant economic town. He laid, he constructed an 8.5 kilometer stretch of road in the Laramoki Township at a cost of 205 million naira single handedly. He has also substantially aided a number of indigents through economic and financial empowerment program. That is why the township conferred on him the Are Atayeshe of Ilara Moki in 1992. He was also conferred Ashiwaju of Imesile, the hometown of his late wife, in 2007. In January 2010, he was conferred with yet another prestigious citizenship title, the Bar Loro of, if, of the source, Ileife, by the then KBAC or Ni or Ba Okwande Chijuade. You will agree with me that Chief Michael Adeojo is a man on a mission. A patriot and a lover of culture, Chief Michael Adeojo has never failed in demonstrating his love for both his country and culture at all times. This was what, this was what led him to create Odua Creations, a garment manufacturing company which specializes in traditional and corporate wares with the use of Nigerian-made fabrics. In recognition of his chain of entrepreneurial sources, general, uh, general, uh, general contribution to the various fields of human endeavor and enormous assistance to religious and social cultural organizations, Chief Michael Adeojo has won numerous national and international awards and titles. He is an ardent lover of sports, he is a supporter of education. And from, don and from donations to various educational projects, he set up Adeojo Scholarship Scheme in 1991, from which more than 85 indigent students have benefited from. In realization of the death of skilled technici technicians and artisans in the country, Chief Adeojo and his, life and his wife decided to arrest the situation by proposing to establish Elizade Polytechnic, which was conceived as a skill acquisition center where technical and entrepreneurial skills can be imparted to youth from all over all parts of the nation and beyond. But the need to move with contemporary trend, contemporary trend, occasioned by the federal government policy, policy change on polytechnics, coupled with the desire to provide at the highest level quality education to the teeming population of Nigerian youth led to the commencement of Elidade University. Chief Adeojo is a lover of golf. He has been participating actively and supporting golfing activities in Nigeria for, since he clocked 60 years old. His interest made him to build an 18th old golf or international golf course in his hometown called the Smoking Hill Golf Resort. It is also on record that is one of his subsidiary companies, Toyota Nigeria Limited, sponsors one of the most popular golf tournaments in the national golfing calendar, Elizabeth Wuraola Ojo Memorial Golf Tournament annually. The last edition took place at the Smoking Hills in November 2019. The story of Chief Adeojo cannot be complete without reference to his first love, late Chief Mrs. Elizabeth Wuraola Ojo, who was a pillar of support 
and a source of inspiration to him during his life, during a lifetime. He is currently married to Mrs. Taiwo Adiojo, an intelligent, easygoing paragon of beauty and an ideal wife. Chief Michael Adiojo is a devout Christian and is blessed with children and many grandchildren. Chancellor, sir, permit me to present to you Chief Michael Adiojo for the award of Doctor of Business Administration, Honoris Causa of the Oba Family Awolowo University. Confirmation of the honorary degree. By the authority vested in me as Chancellor, and in accordance with the provision of the university status, one, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, Honoris Causa, of Obafemi Aolo University, Ileifi, with the great, with the right and privileges attached thereto. Congratulations and God bless you.
using his authority as the officer presiding at this convocation, the Chancellor has directed that the two honorary awardees be allowed to uh, address the convocation. In, consequently, I respectfully invite the, His Imperial Majesty, Oni Enito, over to the Akonde Ogusi to address the convocation. confidence level has actually grown today. You can feel from my voice. Today is indeed another red letter day for me. Your Excellency, the visitor, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, heavily represented by our very own Professor Yemi Oshibajo. We're always very proud of you in everything you do, in your words, your thoughts, your deed, and your courage. Indeed, keep up the good work. Please, a beautiful round of applause for him. Don't worry, I won't take your time. It's a very long day. I will only take 45 minutes of your time. Well, all established protocols, I want to actually honor and observe it. This confirmant is very passionate and a very emotional thing for me. Growing up from an average family in Ileife, the university is the university of my family. A lot was expected from me. All my siblings, most of them attended this university. And I used to look forward to them that someday I will end up in this university. But something along the line happened. Nobody can change destiny. It really affected me so much. Psychologically, but to the glory of God, I came back stronger. But I've always been looking forward to someday that I will be part of the great alumni of this university. Today is a dream come true for me. That is the confidence in my voice. Great Ife! The way I will be calling Great Ife now will be very different. I want to thank specifically the management of the university, ably led by the Vice Chancellor. I've been looking forward to this. This is my sixth year on the throne of my four beers. First year, she university where you want Nick Pemini. Second year, eh Mark Pemi. Third year, Kini Moshe. Fourth year, Abimi Oshida da Tony. Fifth year, Mungo Jolong. But the sixth year, indeed, I was called. And that year is very significant to me. In Yoruba land, it is called Mefa. Otifan Konriri Fumi. On this final note, I am now more committed to the university. 
I'm working as seriously on the town and gown relationship of the university because the university, the foundation of the university is learning and culture. Recently, I declared that the academia in this university, nobody remembers them. Nobody remembers to celebrate them. On this note, I want to officially bring it to this gathering that over the last 60 years of this university, the professors, the doctors, and the non-academic staff of this university have not been celebrated enough, and they don't even have any time to celebrate them. I have taken it upon myself. Every year, I will be celebrating them on a very big note. <laughs> Lastly, I've been working very closely with the university, especially the vice chancellor. I realized that over the last 60 years again, they only have space for 8,000 students. Just 8,000 thereabout. I sat him down, what are we going to do? So the ratio now is like one space, bed space, to like 2018 students. I told him, well, I can move around. I have few contacts in the private sector. I will try as much as possible to raise and do crowdfunding to do a 2.5 kilometer road and a 5,000 bedded space for the students of this university. <laughs> to the glory of God, like play, like play, we are able to pull it together and we are doing it in phases and I can assure this gathering that come next quarter next year, before the vice chancellor officially handover from this university, he will be the one to cut the rip of the first 1,000 bedded space. On this note, I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so very much for making me happy. God bless you and thank you very much. Respectfully invite Chief Mike Adeojo to address the convocation. Introduced because uh, having named the Chancellor of the University, I now look to my left and I saw the Vice President of this great country. I have not recognized him but I'm sure he will pardon this mistake of the mouth, not of the heart. Please pardon me, sir. And I want to also recognize the presence of the controller in this state we are in, the head of government, the governor of Osho State. And um, of course, my own governor, Governor Akere Dolu. I 
I will add one okele to your food. By what you delivered this afternoon. Of course, we are in the territory of the Orni of Ife. A young, enterprising, handsome, we call them natural leaders because they are appointed by God. I greet you, Kabiesi. Please, save me from committing more abnormalities in introduction. And I just want to greet all of us here present this afternoon. I want to thank God for what we have witnessed here today. Well, this is an honor that I did not expect. It just came from the blues. I would like to say that in the year 2001, I was given this same title by my university, the University of Nigeria, Nsuka which is the same thing that I'm being awarded today by the University of Ife, the Great Ife. I want to show my gratitude and the gratitude of my group of companies and of course my adorable wife and of course my children who are here present Demola who is the managing director of Eliza Day JAC and Kunle Adeoju and his wife. Kunle is the managing director of Toyota Nigeria Limited. I want to recognize old friends but I won't name them so that they don't have anything with me saying I called this person before I called the other. So I will avoid that. I want to say it is um, with gladness in my heart to be recognized by this this great university, the University of Ife. This was a university I thought I would attend. But at that time, I was not qualified. And therefore, I had to, by entrance, attend the University of Nigeria on Suka from 1961 to 
I pride myself because we are the first students of business administration in this country. So, business is one of the most popular studies in Nigeria today. In those days, it was BSc, this, BSc, that, and so on. But thank God that the country is advancing in different spheres and things that we did not recognize as important are being recognized today because I think we imitated the Americans. I am receiving this honor with my whole heart. And I want to thank the university for this because it is good to recognize people in their different spheres. Even if you know how to sing, you must be recognized as a singer. And in fact, the singing people are more prosperous than the professors now. Davido, I don't think um, any professor in Ife is as rich as Davido. So, there is, you know, it depends on how you carry yourself and what, what you are carrying and how you carry it and what you put into doing it. In my days, my department was recognized as, um, you know, business, what are they doing with business? But today, you know what you are doing with business. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the honor done to me and my family. And I want to say that to appreciate the worth of what you have done to me, I decided to give the university a luxurious bus of, uh, it's not the big uh, ones coming from the east, But my product has a wonderful product, which I have donated to the university. With this gesture, I do believe that there will be more cooperation between me and the institution. And by God's grace, we shall continue to do our best that God enables us to do. Once more, I want to thank you, the leaders of the university, for considering me as worthy of the honor that has been bestowed on me today. I thank you, and God bless you all. The Chancellor, who is presiding over the ceremony, has decided, has decided to further amend the program. The visitor's address has been moved forward. Chancellor, I have the honor 
to invite the visitor, the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, DCFR, ably represented by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, to address the convocation. Excellency, the Governor of Oshu State, Dr. Adeboega of Yetola, Excellency, the Governor of Ondo State, Arapuri, Rotimi, Akure Dolu, and the Excellency, the Governors of Ikiti State, represented by the Deputy Governor of Tumba Adebisi, Adeboega, and the Deputy Governor of Oshu State, Mr. Benedict Oluboega Alabi. The Chancellor, His Royal Highness, Beit Sunupe, Alaji Dr. Yaya Abubakar, Bahagaji, Bahagaji, and other Royal Fathers present. The Pro Chancellor of Bafemi Awolo University and Chairman of Bafemi Awolo University Association, Owele Oscar Udoji. Vice Chancellor of Bafemi Awolo University, Professor Yitokwe Okumbo Dede, and the management of the university. The honorees, His Imperial Majesty, the Oni of Ife, and our D of the Bafemi Awolo University Honorary Degree, Doctor Letters Obadini Enito, who is Gajia II, obviously. The founder, Elizabeth University, and our D of the Obafemi Awolo University Honorary Degree, Chief Michael Adiojo, and his dear wife, Mrs. Taiwo Adiojo. Our Ds of degrees and distinguished graduates, Special Advisor to the President on Economic Matters, Ambassador Adi Amidu. Great Ife. Great Ife. I, my brother, my older brother, who attended this university, and I have always had very many arguments about which was the better university, my own alma mater, the University of Lagos, or uh, Ife, or Bafemi Awolo University today. This morning, he called me and said to me that, well, you are going to Great Ife today. You better heal us, Great Ife. So I have healed Great Ife, and uh, the thing is that I do so proudly because this is indeed a great university, a great citadel of learning. I bring you the very warm felicitations of Mr. President to the graduates as well as to the university community on your 60th anniversary. As you know, I am at his direction, standing in today as visitor to the university. I also thank you for the kind invitation as special guest of honor today. The caliber of the honorary graduates at today's ceremony speaks to the high standards of Obafemi Awolo University. It speaks to the very high standards of the Obafemi Awolo University. And may I congratulate KBSC, the Oni of Ife, Enito Ogoisi, or Jaja II, a man who has in a few short years redefined the exalted throne of the Oni by deliberately, by deliberately empowering the next generation and building bridges from the west to the east, from the north to the south and serving our race with passion and zest. Also, to Chief Michael Adiojo, I say congratulations, sir, for proving time and time again 
that you can do business honestly and fairly and still be wealthy and successful. And also, by establishing a university and several other altruistic deeds, you have clearly demonstrated that the real value of wealth or status is in the service that is rendered by such means to others. Hearty congratulations also to those being awarded the Doctor of Philosophy degrees today. Congratulations indeed. I must also pause to celebrate my colleagues in academia, the great scholars and fine academics who make up the faculties here at the OAU. You are the thought leaders at a historic moment where you have the great task of guiding the present and inspiring the future. The convocation lecturer, my brother and friend, Arakmuni Oluwarotimi, Akredolu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria and Supreme Commander of Amoteku. As I always describe him, a wealthy and successful lawyer and alumnus of this great university. He's given us much to ponder and reflect upon. And I salute you as always for such a thoughtful and insightful lecture. And to the real reason why we are here, the graduates, congratulations to you. And of course, all the family members and friends who are here to witness this great day. A diamond jubilee is certainly worth celebrating. And anyone who owns a diamond would take any opportunity to show off its strength and quality. For this university, the Obafemi Awolo University, and you'll permit me to refer to it occasionally as IFE, there is much to show and many stories to tell. Stories of the institution itself and many of the incredible successes of its alumni. Stories of the triumphs of human endeavor, the primacy of ideas, the creative force of the introspective mind, and the power of vision. For example, that IFE has one of the most beautiful campuses in Africa was, was a product of vision and the imagination of the legendary Professor Hezekiah Adida Molo Oluwa Somi, his colleagues and collaborators of that era. In, his, in, a, in an autobiography, Audacity on the Bound, written by Ambassador Olushan, one of Nigeria's pioneer diplomats who studied at Harvard University around the same time as Professor Oluwa Somi, and who later became a professorial fellow here at the OEA. He says, and I quote, the magnificent Obafemi Awolo University was the toil and sweat of Hezekiah Oluwa Somi, end of quote. And I think it is fitting, and I think it is fitting indeed that the university library the symbol of learning is named after this great man. This university, OAU, is and continues to be very much a bastion of progressivism and innovation. And not surprisingly, you will find the phrase, a looter against all oppression in the great Ife anthem. <laughs> this pro progressivism is evident in the outlook of staff and students alike including alumni who are governors, like my, uh, like my learned brother. The great IFE Socialist School of Thought, the IFE Collective, with seminal thinkers like Shegun Oshoba, Shesun Dikwe Olu, Boye Olorode, Oladipo Fashino, Shegun Adewoye, Gigi Dara, and others, were here mutually reinforcing their counterparts at the Amadu Bello University. It was here at IFE that Awo, Chief of Bafemi Aolo, for many years Chancellor of this university, gave some of the most memorable and consequential lectures on the political economy of Nigeria and addressed some of his most crucial problems, including the imperatives of democracy, national economic development, the ideology of governance, and of course the famous national census figures. It was while still teaching here that Professor Wale Shuenka won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. 
but perhaps is less well known that he was also a lecturer at the University of Ife, Ibadan campus in the early 60s when he started his earliest skirmishes with state authorities. And it seems that Wole Shurenka attracted a new tribe of literary insurgents into Ife. Insurgents because they represented a more aggressive politically and socially conscious literati than their forebears at Ibadan at the time. I'm talking of the likes of Yodun Jeifo, Kole Omotosho, uh, Yemi Ogumbi, and again Didi uh, Gigi Dara. Yemi Ogumbi and Biodun Jeifo, and a few more, left Ife and joined Alex Ibru and Stanley Makibo and Lade Bonuola to radically and permanently change the face of print journalism in Nigeria with the establishment of the Guardian newspapers. But that was a generation of men who are now 70 years old and over. Now, several generations later, sitting in his hotel, his hostel room here at the OAU, Sheon Oshewa, then an undergraduate, developed a revolutionary journalism idea. This time, technology-based, Naira Land, now possibly Africa's largest internet forum. Naira Land has 2.5. Naira Land has 2.5 million registered users, almost 10 times more readers than all Nigerian print newspapers put together. But talking about founding businesses in hostels, I am sure we all know now the multi-million dollar job website, Jobberman. It was founded also here at the OAU in 2009 by Olale Konelude, and at the time students of this university. It was here at Ife also. In this place of deep culture, that the Oriolopo Acting Company was founded by Professor Olao Rotimi, from where the award-winning dramatic tragedies, Urumi, and the gods are not to blame, came. And from here also, held more recently, And from here also came more recently the eloquent historical excursions of Professor Tony Falola, who is currently at the University of Texas at, at Austin in the US. These pioneers and greats inspired a generation of artists that established Nigeria's primacy in the creative arts. Young artists trained at OAU are continuing in this strong literary tradition Lagwaja, the iconic masked musician, is also an Ife alumnus whose father was faculty here. Dami Ajayi, who studied medicine here, but went on to co-found Saraba magazine. Emmanuel Faith, an up-and-coming poet, who is helping to promote reading culture through Bookathon, where members read at least five books per month. But the stories of Ife go beyond its history. If it has always proved to be a place of cutting-edge innovation, and even more so, a place for the incubation of tomorrow's solutions. In 1974, at a convocation ceremony held here at Ife, Tifaolo captured the centrality of man in the advancement of our world when he famously said, and I quote, man is the sole dynamic in nature, and accordingly, every individual in Nigeria constitutes the supreme economic potential which this country possesses." End of quote. So we must be... So we must be... So we must be proud. We must be proud of the far-sightedness of the faculties and management of this great citadel of learning. OEU was very much ahead of its time when it named its medical faculty the Faculty of Health Sciences and its engineering faculty the Faculty of Technology. The Faculty of Health Sciences at IFE was unique from the emphasis that it laid on community medicine and the attainment of a BSc in Health Sciences before proceeding to study for the medical degree of MBCHB. So not surprisingly, the university has produced top-notch researchers 
in several areas of medicine, but in particular in public health. I had the pleasure of meeting with professors Agisui Ajayi and Femi Babalola, both IFE alumni, when they undertook groundbreaking research and clinical trials into the potential use of ivermectin as a prophylactic and a cure for COVID-19. Professor Oluyinka Olutoe, another alumnus of the Faculty of Health Sciences, attained global recognition when he led a team of surgeons to success successfully take a 23-week-old baby out of her mother's womb, remove the tumor from the baby, and returned it to the mother's womb, where the injuries where the injuries from her operation healed, and she continued to grow until she was born the second time at 36 weeks. The Faculty of Technology was one of the first to, in, to include electronics in its electrical engineering program. And so not surprisingly, the early leaders in technology and tech-enabled businesses were alumni of OE's Department of Electronics and Electrical Engineering. And of course, you would mention the likes of Shegun Ogunsoya, CEO of Airtel Africa, of course, if and if an alumnus, Carl Toriola, CEO of MTN Nigeria, and another great IFA alumnus and product of this same department, uh, Professor Akintayo Akinwande, who teaches today at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and is one of the world's most respected professors of electrical engineering and computer science. And only last week, another alumnus of the electronics and electrical engineering department of this university, Ms. Funke Okweke, made global investment news when Equinix, the global conglomerate, announced that it was acquiring Main One, the company that Funke founded, for $320 million. Main One is West Africa's first privately owned open access undersea high capacity cable. It is 7,000 kilometer cable stretching from Portugal to West Africa with landings in Accra, in Dakar, in Abidjan, and in Lagos. And I'm sure that the Department of Agricultural Economics must be wondering how I forgot to mention their two most celebra celebrated alumni, Dr. Akiyash Deshina, president of the Africa Development Bank, and winner of the World Food Prize, and Dr. O.K. Orama, president of Afro-Exim Bank, who of course, as you know, obtained his MSc and PhD here at OAU. So to the graduates today, you have some of the highest shoulders and the broadest shoulders to stand on. But it is this generation that must deal with the biggest issues that confront the world and confront our nation. It is the big and innovative ideas that will solve these problems. You will have to confront the problems of climate change and a world moving away from fossil fuels. And you will usher in the age of renewable energy and green solutions. You will deal with the issues of feeding, educating, providing healthcare and jobs for the fourth largest population in the world in a few years to come. We will need smarter agri solutions to feed these huge numbers. Technology is already helping to crowdfund agriculture and help more prolific seedlings. Education needs hundreds of new solutions. We will not learn and teach in the old ways in another few years. And we have to design ways of teaching millions, even outside the classrooms. And there are many young men and women already doing great things, using technology to reach children in far-flung areas of our country. You will confront the need to vastly improve our public and clinical health care. We must build on the work of the Genomic Center at EDE and the local vaccine production efforts going on and make local drugs and make drugs locally for hundreds of millions of Nigerians. The insecurity problems that we're experiencing, the rise of terrorism in several parts of the country, this very large country, and the access to lethal weaponry by non-state state actors tell us that we must be smarter in policing the country using smart drones and surveillance equipment. The, the uh, politicization, if I may, of the importation of ammunition 
tells us that we must manufacture our own arms. Already, Proforce, a Nigerian company led by Ola Ogunde, is manufacturing APCs, armored personnel carriers, and MRAPs in their factory in Odiremo. And they're exporting already to several African countries. So are uh, Imperial, a company based in Kaduna, and the government owned Daikon, producing different types of ammunition. The future is smart weapons, benefiting from AI and machine learning. Yes, the challenges are huge, but I believe that you are well equipped to resolve them. And the evidence is here already. Since 2016, despite two recessions, young Nigerians have built six unicorns. A unicorn is a company that is valued at over a billion dollars. And there are already six established in this country since 2016. It was Awo who said, right here in Ife again, that it is effective economic planning and even more effective implementation that would enable us to avoid a disaster and reap phenomenal progress instead. And so our third national development plan, 2021 to 2025, is an attempt to chart a path for the future. The future belongs far more to you graduates, so you need to pay attention to it. One of the crafters of the plan, Ambassador Yemidikwe Olu, is here with me, the special advisor to the president on the economy. He's also alum an alumnus of, of IFE, who, and he lived in this campus all his life. His father, Mr. Sheson Dikwe Olu, of blessed memory, was IFE's first African librarian. The strategic objectives of the National Development Plan include establishing a strong foundation for a diversified economy, investing in critical infrastructure, in particular power and broadband, enabling human capital development, teaching STEM, and improving governance and strengthening security. And its implementation is expected to be supported by a range of measures of fiscal, monetary, and trade measures. The plan emphasizes the creation of an average of 5 million jobs per annum during the period. In addition to job openings, it's also essential for Nigerian youth to acquire the skills and knowledge of the workplace. This is why we're working with the United Nations Development Program and the European Union and other partners on the Jubilees Fellows Program, which is a one-year work placement scheme for 20,000 young Nigerians annually over the next five years. This will be a paid work placement scheme to sharpen the skills of those who are coming out of school beginning uh, from the first quarter of next year. The National Development Plan focuses on value addition across all sectors, including agriculture, manufacturing, solid minerals, digital services, tourism, hospitality, sports, and entertainment. In agriculture, for example, equal attention is being given to primary production, as well as other aspects of the value chain, such as transportation, storage, processing, marketing, and exports. In a similar context, the, the plan places great emphasis on the export of goods and services, especially leveraging on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. There are several, several different aspects of the plan, and I hope you'll get an opportunity to read even the summary of it. So let me again congratulate the honorees and the graduates, and I pray that you individually will do much better than all your predecessors that we have mentioned here today and to the university at 60, and to the university at 60. I pray that the next 60 years will be more fruitful and more fulfilling and make this an even greater university. God bless the Obafemi Awolo University. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chancellor, sir, the persons who will be presented having fulfilled the requirements of the statutes and the regulations of Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, and have been found worthy both in character and learning, wish to be received as graduates of the university. 
holding Doctor of Philosophy, PhD degrees of their various programs in their various faculties. I therefore call upon the Provost of the Postgraduate College to present the graduates. With the graduates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy in the faculties of Administration, Agriculture, Arts, Basic Medical Sciences, Clinical Sciences, Education, Environmental Design and Management, Law, Pharmacy, Science, Social Sciences, and Technology. Please stand. Please note that due to the need to comply with uh, COVID-19 protocol, that the graduates will not file out as usual. The Provost Postgraduate College. Thanks, Adlon. In the name and by the authority of Senate, I present to you the following candidates, those present and those unavoidably absent, whose names appear on this list, and for whom I stand proxy for the confirmation of degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Accounting, Adult Education, African Art Studies, African Literature in French, Agricultural Economics, Agricultural Engineering, Agricultural Extension and Rural Sociology, Anatomy, Animal Sciences, Applied Geology, Architecture, Anatomy, Biochemistry, Botany, Building Structure, Business Administration, Chemical Engineering, Chemistry, Computer Engineering, Computer Science, Curriculum Studies, Construction Management, Demography and Social Statistics, Dramatic Arts, Early Childhood Development, Ecology and Environmental Science, Economics, Educational Planning, Educational Technology, Electronics and Electrical Engineering, English Language, Estate Management, French Language and Linguistics, Food Science and Technology, Geography, German Language and Linguistics, Guidance and Counseling, Health Physics and Environment, Higher Education Administration, History, Information Science, Intelligence System Engineering, International Relations, Law, Literature in English, Local Government Studies, Material Science, Mathematics, Mechanical Engineering, Medical Physics, Microbiology, Music, Pharmacology, Pharmacy Administration, Nursing, Nuclear Science and Engineering, Philosophy of Education, Physics, Physiology, Plant Science, Psychology of Education, Psychology of Public Administration, Public Health, Quantity Surveying, Religious Studies, Fit Science and Technology, Social Science, Sociology and Anthropology, Soil Science, Statistics, Technology Management, Test and Measurement, Urban and Regional Planning, Yoruba Language and Literature, and Zoology of Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. The visitor, sir, distinguished uh, invited guest. Before I announce the confirmation of these degrees, you know, in Obafemi Aolo University, we are very innovative, very flexible, and very understanding. And by the protocol, 
COVID-19, which also mandates people to stay, to observe uh, distance, wear masks, and uh, reduce the shaking of hands, which are supposed to do to all of you this time around. And considering the long time we have stayed here with His uh, Excellency, the Vice President here, and all the governors, I want to make a, a small drill for all of you. A drill in the military term is a sequence of uh, actions. Now, I'm quite sure that each and every one of you have his first name starting with a letter within the alphabetical orders we have. We have 26 alphabetical letters, A, B to Z. If I announce a, you raise your hand and then extend your hand so assume I'm shaking you. If I say B, you will raise your hand, extend it, and I'm shaking B down to Z, Z. So we do that one to cover, I'm sure all of you here, you are more than 26 in number, but you are within the 26, your names. So your first name will be announced with that. Letter A, B, C, D to Z. Uh, you extend your hands to me, and uh, by spiritual powers, God has given me, you exchange my handshake also. So thank you. Confirmed of the Doctor of Philosophy degrees. By the authority vested in me as the Chancellor, I confer upon you all the degree of Doctor of Philosophy of Obafemi Aolo University. Elevi. Various programs as approved by Senate. Now, A, A, God bless you. B, C, D, nobody with D, E, F. G, I, we have a mistake, H, which one next, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, E, Q, R S T U V U X Y Z Congratulations and God bless you all. May sit down. Oh. Please remain standing. Please, please remain standing. The graduates will drop their caps, bow to the chancellor, drop your caps, I can't see you, drop your caps, bow to the chancellor, put on your caps. Now you can sit down. Congratulations. Honorable Chancellor, sir, I now have the pleasure to request you to declare the 45th convocation closed. Your Excellency, distinguished brothers, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare this convocation closed. And may Almighty Allah who carry each and every one of us to our respective destination. Thank you, God bless. Now, please, we remain standing for the anthems in reverse order.
garden of wisdom, the place of us and signs where men and women seek knowledge. Anthem of the state of Oshun. session here will be in reverse order. Let's give honor to the distinguished Nigerians on the air table here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Academic procession will take this way here.
families, graduates, please listen to these announcements. You have to take this way here so that you'll be able to collect your school. So we'll be giving you your school here. So graduates, Dami Ola will be thank you very much, my brother, for being here. We appreciate the presence of the Honorable Commissioner Wale Lukundi. Thank you very much. The BPRO, thank you very much. The Director of State Service, we appreciate you, sir. My dear sir, the only thing that is legal Oh, 